Coach Tommy Tuberville takes the field with his Tigers. And as I said, there's a lot of excitement here in Auburn, Alabama, and for their faithful. And there's a reason for that. In the preseason polls, the news media said the Tigers will win the West of the SEC and also capture the Southeastern Conference Championship. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, and welcome to a full season of primetime college football right here on ESPN2. That's the good news if you're an Auburn fan. But now I ask the question, is that an albatross around Tommy Tuberville's neck? Because the media has picked him, but 12 of the last 14 years, the media has been wrong. We'll see if those real Tigers take a step forward tonight. I'm happy to welcome to the telecast Ed Cunningham, who will be with me all year long. And Ed, one thing goes without saying. The Tigers have lost three of their last four opening games, and the head coach said no late wake-up calls this year. We're going to be set to go for game number one. And it started back in the spring. Tuberville had the most physical spring practice he's ever had, and it rolled right into camp. They backed off a little bit this week, and the reason that they are chosen to win the SEC is not because of all the youth on defense. It's because of all the veterans coming back, especially at quarterback. Brandon Cox had a very rough start last year against Georgia Tech, threw four interceptions in that game, but only four interceptions the rest of the year. Kenny Irons barely played against Georgia Tech, and all he did was lead the SEC in rushing. But the big change on defense was Will Herring, who was all SEC at safety, moving down closer to the line of scrimmage at linebacker. Will Muschamp, the new defensive coordinator, wanted his athleticism near the line of scrimmage. Expect them to blitz a lot tonight against Washington State. Well, the third member of our telecast tonight an old friend who I'm very glad to be reunited with is there a doctor in the house there certainly is let's go to the sideline at Dr. Jerry Punch Jerry thank you very much Ron it is good to be here and hello everyone welcome to Auburn Alabama you know the big concerns for Washington State the Cougars tonight is how would the players handle the heat humidity and all this noise in this great arena here in the SEC well the players of Washington State had some injuries in the preseason their ranks are very thin offensively and defensively in the front but they caught a break in terms of the weather. A shower about a half an hour ago. The temperature a very tolerable 80 degrees on the field and the humidity about 75%. As for the noise, well, you be the judge. The concern they have is their quarterback, Alex Brink, suffered from tonsillitis and a strep throat all week long. One has to wonder how long his voice will last against this kind of racket all night long. And oh, by the way, in Pullman, Washington last night, the low temperature was 40 degrees, the humidity 20%, so it is still quite a contrast. Bob? Okay, Jerry, thanks so much. Great to have you with us. We look forward to hearing from you tonight. Our current situation, 75 degrees, very, very high humidity, and there's a 30% chance that we could get another thunder shower. Well, as Jerry said, one came through uh, just a short time ago. Didn't last very long, and this field is in such good position, uh, uh, in such good shape, it's not going to be a problem for either team. Matt Clark is set to kick it off, and Putsana and Gibson, the two deep men for the Cougars of Washington State. Very long, deep kickoff. The one-inch team is supposed <laughs> yeah, to keep that. So much for the new rule. <laughs> <laughs> so Brink prepares to bring his ball club out on the field, and the starters on offense. Uh, Wooldridge, uh, a very good running back. T a couple of guys to watch. Uh, Jason Hill gets so much publicity, but Michael Bumpus out of Culver City, California, he's a burner and a great kick returner. And Bumpus is going to be so necessary at that slot receiver. I think that Will Muschamp's coming after Brink. You've got to throw it to that inside receiver on the hot routes if you're getting pressure. Bobby Bird, the left tackle, number 70, gets a lot of conversation from the coaches. Here comes pressure. He's going to be sacked on the very first play of the ball game, and it's Karibi Didi who comes from that linebacking position to make the tackle for the Tigers. Let's take a look at the starters on defense. Very fast. Whether you're talking about interior linemen or you're talking about linebackers, this is a group of kids who can really run. Mark's a freshman, Merrill Johnson just a sophomore, and Aaron Savage, a freshman, is the whole reason that Will Herring could come down near the line of scrimmage. This young man has a lot of ability. Loss of seven on the first play. Running play goes to Woldridge. Up the left side, out back over the 20. So around the 22, and Aditi is there to make still another play on the second snap. And that first sack, Ron, really was just a blown assignment. 
And I think there's some jitters out there for Washington State. Who could blame them? They've played in environments like this before. You go to SC nowadays, there's 90,000 people screaming at you. They played at Ohio State a couple of years ago. But this offensive line, they lost one of their starters during camp. They've got to get the communication. They've got a fifth-year senior at center, so they should be able to figure it out. So it's third down, and the line to make is the 30-yard line. From the shotgun, pressure from behind, going to be sacked again. It's going to be a loss of six yards this time as Quentin Groves, the junior out of Greenville, Mississippi, will come from his right defensive end to make the tackle. You know, Tommy Tuberville told us that this is as fast a defense as he has ever coached. Now let's put that into context. Tommy Tuberville coached at Miami in the late 80s and early 90s. That is a mouthful from this coach. And also at Texas A&M, which is known for <laughs> Yeah, they had a little defense. bit of speed in the mid-90s the, as well. The wrecking crew is what they call it. Darryl Blunt prepares to kick it away to Robert Dunn. Nice, long driving kick. All the way back to the 36-yard line. He'll try for the return. Done. Nice job by Washington State as they corral him after a return of only about four yards. 48 on the kick and will give him officially seven yards on the return. So take a look at the starters on offense for the Auburn Tigers. First time to see them tonight. And of course, an opportunity to see Kenny Irons. So much uh, ability out at wide receiver. Everyone talked about the three receivers that were gone. The middle of that offensive line is as good as there is in the country. Kenny Irons, one year ago tonight, we were here doing Georgia Tech at Auburn. Only touched the ball as it's had only one time in that ball game. Gained six yards. Went on to lead the conference. Here he goes. Has five, has ten. Cut it off. Big play on the way. Inside the 15-yard line. Kenny Irons on his first play from scrimmage. 42 yards on the carry. Frampton saves the touchdown. And here's the difference with Kenny Irons when they run this little stretch. His cuts are much shorter than when you had Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown. They went more sideways when they got to the line of scrimmage. And Al Borges said, we actually had to change our angle of blocking because this guy's cuts are so crisp. Duckworth with an extremely good block on the play. Number 76, the senior out of Taylorsville, Mississippi. First down from the 15. They stretch it. Coming outside. That's a nice play defensively as he's going to be held to a gain of only one. And that's McChristo Bruce, an outstanding defensive end for the Cougars of Washington State as we take a look at their starting 11. And there was a change late on the defensive line. Aaron Johnson comes in and starts at that defensive tackle, but Bruce is a speed guy that the Auburn offense is very concerned about on the edge. We're going to see Washington State probably in a 3-4 more of the night because they are deeper at linebacker than interior linemen. This time to the right, and they string him out. It's going to be no gain on the play, and it'll be third down Auburn and 10. Abdullah, Hussein Abdullah, number 23, made the tackle, but credit Scott Davis with stringing out the play and getting some help from his friends. And this is right where Washington State struggled last year. They went four and seven. They started three and zero, lost seven ball games in a row. Bill Doba, who was the defensive coordinator, and that's Rob Akey to his right, his defensive coordinator. But Doba was a defensive guy for Coach Mike Price. And uh, they just weren't up to it. They had some guys injured last year, but they have improved their speed in the secondary. Trey Smith comes into the lineup, number 22. Now keep in mind, he is the best receiver of the running backs. Short drop, first play, uh, first pass of the night. It's going to be overthrown. Courtney Taylor. Actually, Rod Smith is who they were looking for down in the corner of the end zone. But Tyron Breckenridge had the cover. And Tyron had a hamstring injury during camp and really didn't get to play very much. Very good coverage this time. There was some contact between Smith and Breckenridge, but it was uh, no harm, no foul kind of situation. So good, good no call by the official on that. John Vaughn comes in to attempt a 31-yard field goal. He is 10 of 16 between the 30 and the 39-yard line. This one, as you can see from the far hash mark. Good pass and a good kick. The Auburn Tigers have taken the lead three to nothing. So let's take a timeout. When we come back, we'll see if the Cougars of Washington State can come up with an answer.
A reminder, this telecast is available on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. Now, I'm going to be anxious to see if he's going to be able to boot it out of the end zone again, because as we talk, the rules committee was hoping to add 20% more kickoff returns across the country, which is a huge number. The one inch T is supposed to do that, but this is a very strong leg and nine yards deep again. Hutsana catches it and just nothing he can do. So for Washington State, who are their impact players? Well, it's pretty easy. When you have a veteran quarterback, Alex Brink, last year finally won the battle against Josh Schwager to take over as the starting quarterback. And everybody talks about his command of the huddle. Very tough-minded guy. Jason Hill is as good a receiver as Auburn is going to see all year. He has very deceptive speed. When we talked to David Irons yesterday, the cornerback, he said you, it, it's sneaky. You don't know he's running by you until it's too late. This time under center, that means in four snaps, there have been three sacks of the quarterback. This time, Chris Browder, the senior out of Camden, Alabama, got in to make the tackle. Well, Bill, Will Muschamp, the new defensive coordinator, this is easy. If you're going to get this much pressure, just rushing forward, there was a little bit of a stunt up front. Browder, the defensive end, came inside, but he's not going to have to call any blitzes, Ryan. And if you can get pressure and play zone, it's going to be a long night for Washington State. But Sana checks into the ball game. Linebacker coming, also a safety. Pass incomplete. He caught the ball. Daryl Hutsana did, but the tip of the ball was on the ground, and the official right there said, nope, no catch. Incomplete. It'll be third down. And now was a scrimmage from the 14. They need 16 yards to keep this drive going. And I hate to say this. You've got to play a little field position here. I would think some kind of screen or draw, pick up 10 or 12 yards. This is a bad field position play if you don't pick up positive yardage here. Of the 18 sacks allowed last year, they've given up three tonight. Safety blitz coming from deep, draw play, 5, 10, 15. He's going to be close to the first down. Hutsana, let's see where they're giving forward progress. And I'll tell you, it is going to be just inches short, I believe. At this deep in your own territory, you, you don't gamble, do you? Well, no, and Hutsana, it was a good call. Tim Rosenbaugh calls the plays, but Hutsana, who's a speed guy out of San Diego, he's got to finish this run. Don't go sideways here get up the field he's trying to make too big of a play if he gets if he gets directly up the field when he gets to that hash he picks up the first down easily so they're going to go with the higher odds unless it's a fake Buck comes on to punt and he was oh so close i mean less than a foot that's all they needed here's the boot driving kick long but should be returnable because it is a line drive Tries to get outside on the right of Washington State with excellent coverage again. They're all overdone. 48 on the kick and two on the return. Well, ESPN Full Circle brings you the great ACC rivalry that always seems to carry national title implications. Number 11, Florida State against number 12, Miami, presented by Dish Network, Monday at 8 Eastern from every angle. Now, how about this? Well, ESPN has close-ups of legendary Coach Bowden, then the quarterbacks and more. ESPNU and ESPN 360 have the Sky Cam, plus commentary from Colin Coward. ESPN Full Circle, Florida State, Miami on ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN. ESPN, U, ESPN 360, and more. <laughs> a cast of Good thousands. Out. Too tight in alignment this time for the Tigers. Second pass of the night. Comes out complete. That's Courtney Taylor. Going to have a short game, but the official said he went down before he got out of bounds. And let's go down to the sideline and check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Thank you, Ron. We talked about how the injuries had really mounted up for Washington State's defensive front, and Rob Akey has certainly had his troubles here in the preseason. He lost uh, a starter, Matt Mullinex, early in the week with an ACL torn. Two days ago, he lost the other starter, tackle Amu, with a fracture that had reappeared from a repair in the spring. So they are down two offensive, two defensive starters in the front. I want to tell you, that's, that's tough dealing. Nice cut back by Irons. He's going to have a first down because one of the things that happened to the Cougars last year, the linebackers had trouble. And I am told from people who watched them and also from their coaches, tackles have got to keep those interior linemen off the linebackers. And that didn't happen last they, year. They lost a very good defensive lineman last year, Rapoti Patua, uh, Patua Tua, who's back in this year. 
uh, broke his leg. They had to put the freshman Amu in there. He played really well, and then Aki loses him again this week, and Johnson comes back in. So they're very thin. Play action. Good safe pass. Throws it complete. Rodriguez on the catch, trying to play a little NFL here. I'm going to catch it, get up and run. But uh, right now, the play calling, very smart and very conservative. You did that game last year, Ron, where yes. they came out against Georgia Tech. And Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, admitted right after the game that he put too much on the shoulders of Brandon Cox. Exactly. And he, Brandon is such a smart guy. They thought he could handle it. And it was the first game, and he threw four interceptions. So this is pulling it back a little bit. We've got a guy number 23 who can run it just fine. So very you know, safe passes. I mean, it, it says a lot about the head coach also, who said, you know, hey, it doesn't take – it doesn't take me long to look at a horseshoe. I understand what I did last year was wrong. And he said Kenny Irons did not know the blocking scheme, but he said he shouldn't have been in there to block. I should have had him just running the football. The, the problem they had with Irons was they didn't know they could trust him. Uh, you know, you take the test. Uh, every school now gives tests to their players on the Friday nights, and he failed. For the first three weeks of the season, he didn't know what defenses they were in. He didn't know what his blitz responsibilities, and they were afraid. In the first two ball games, he barely touched the ball. You also saw Eddie Gann on the near side in that picture. He's the running back's coach, and it was Eddie Gann who said to the head coach, he's not ready. Well, they fake the reverse. They give it to Irons. Tries to turn the corner, and a good tough run as he'll go across midfield. It's going to be about three and a half yard. And Hussein Abdullah is there to make the tackle. I think the thing that is so deceiving about Kenny Irons, first of all, his, his cutbacks are so crisp and so fast. He does not go sideways a lot. And, and I think Husana from Washington State should be standing and watching this young man how to get up the field. But he is so much stronger than he appears. He's just over 200 pounds, but he runs like he's about 230. Five carries for 51 yards for him. Open it up with a black hit from behind, and the ball is thrown short. Courtney Taylor is the man that he wanted. Eric Frampton, coming from a strong safety position, came with pressure. And what is happening tonight in this ball game as it takes shape just over halfway through the opening quarter? Last year, Georgia Tech came in here, and they were blitzing when they got off the bus. <laughs> That's what Auburn has done to Washington State so far. It kept them off balance. I think the concern for Rob Akey, the defensive coordinator for Washington State, is Kenny Irons. And if you blitz, he's going to come out the backside. That's really the first blitz that he has called all night. Third down, and the line to make is at the Washington State 43. Brandon Cox with an audible. You can see Rodriguez reset at the bottom of your screen. Good protection. Runs out of the pocket. Going to have the first down, and Cox shows he has an abundance of speed to get him there. He's not a burner, but he's certainly not slow. Scott Davis pushed him out 14 yards on the play. Well, that's what Al Borges was talking about, the quarterback's coach and offensive coordinator for Tommy Tuberville. He said, you know, Cox is not the fastest guy in the world, but he runs smart. He does a nice job moving around the pocket, and the defensive end on that side, and Christo Bruce just came down inside trying to make a play, and Cox took what he gave him. So Auburn moves the chains. Three to nothing, they lead. Just under seven minutes to play, opening quarter. And Brandon Cox wants oh. to call a timeout. Oh, I don't know the wrong personnel grouping on the field or what. But let's take a timeout. Auburn three, Washington State nothing. Can the Cougars hold on this trip? We'll be right back to find out. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Chevrolet. America's brand. Chevy. An American Revolution. And Under Armour Performance. The advantage is undeniable. A look at the Loveless Athletic Museum. I understand Ed got to write that tiger yesterday. I it's only know. 10 cents, actually. <laughs> it's not to a quarter yet. Brad Lester, number one in the ball game at tailback. And again, this time they give him the ball. And again, they think that that end around. Let's check in with Brian Ketty back in the studio. Brian, what do you have for us? All right, Ron, we've got Alabama and Hawaii. Two long drives for Alabama. The first one brought in a field goal, second one a touchdown. That's Tim Castile for Alabama, 10 play, 62 yards. So the Crimson Tide taking the lead and up on top now, 16 to 3. Florida having some problems with Southern Miss. We'll have that more for you, Ron, later on. Eighth play of the drive here on a second down. 
They need the 25 yard line, and Lester stays in the ball game at tailback. He's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage, breaks off the tackle, really turning those legs and taking it inside the 28 yard line. It'll be third down, tackled by Frampton. Well, this is where Rob Akey likes to bring blitzes. Uh, went up and spent some time with them at training camp, Washington State getting ready for this ball game. And inside the 30 yard line is when he wants to get a negative yardage play. With Cox at quarterback, they have the ability to fake every single running play that Auburn runs has a fake boot off of it. So if you bring pressure, someone better be home on the backside. Third down. They need about two and a half yards to pick up the first down. Auburn on top, three to nothing. You see the corners creeping up. They get good protection, and the ball is dropped by Rodriguez. Hit him in the wrong spot. I mean, so squarely in the hands, he was not even turned sideways. Cox pulled the string on that one, though. I, don't get me wrong. Brichet needs to catch this ball. But he had him so wide open that he guided it in there instead of slinging it to him. Yeah. And I think that Rodriguez expected the ball to be coming a little harder. So Vaughn is going to try a field goal. Again, this one is going to be placed down just beyond the 34 yard line. So we're going to say a 44 yard attempt. Two of eight his percentages from this range. Ball is down plenty of distance. He's good. That's a new log for him. His longest had been 43 yards. Uh, against Louisiana Monroe and of course he had that horrible mm -hmm. night down in Baton Rouge when the Tigers lost against the LSU Tigers and with five misses and Tommy just has newfound confidence in this young man uh, he really struggled last year he was 0 for 6 from over 40 yards but he said he was so good in camp he was 85 percent in their pressure drill so that's why he's feeling good going to him in that situation let's go down to the sideline Jerry Punch you've got more on the weather tonight and particularly on the humidity and its effects Exactly, Ron. You know, Dr. David Pasco, who is a Ph.D. in human bioenergetics here at, at Auburn, has determined that a 300-pound offensive or defensive lineman can lose up to four liters of sweat per hour. Now, this is sweat. Just imagine he's losing two of these per hour. Now, to replace it, the most you can drink is about a half of one of these bottles of water or about a half a bottle of sports beverage. That's one liter, but you're still behind. So they can run you to the locker room and put one of these bags of IV in. It takes about three to five minutes. They put a pressure cup around it, squeeze it down to put it in at halftime they could put three of these in but do the math three hour football game do figure it up these players can lose 12 to 16 pounds in a three hour game in fact last year a drummer in the band lost 11 pounds during a football game guys well hey jerry thanks good stuff there dr jerry punch now call, that's called the plains diet you know, there's the south beach this is the plains diet these guys are on matt clark has kicked two of them nine yards deep let's see if he can do it again and this one is going to be about five yards deep, and Hutsana couldn't hold on to it. And it's a good thing because I think he was going to return it, <laughs> which didn't seem like maybe the smartest thing to do. Because as, as you have so accurately talked about, the field position has just been nothing short of horrible for them this entire first quarter. And Washington State has to get something going. This and defense I, can't play no, the whole can't. first quarter. Well, especially with Amu at home in Washington State with a, with a stress fracture, their defensive tackle who is starting. They don't have guys at that defensive tackle they can rotate through, and those big fellows will wear out. You see, and the plays that they have, only two positive yardage. And there's number three. That's going to be enough for the first down as uh, Chris Jordan on the curl comes back and gets it nicely <laughs> thrown. Haribi Didi is there to tackle. And you said the key, came back to get it. You see, a lot of times when they run that little hook, they'll sit and wait for it. You have to go get that ball. Jordan, a guy who's really struggled coming back from a knee injury, does a very nice job coming back to that ball and picking up a much-needed first down. Now, the name we have not mentioned tonight, and we have to mention for the Cougars to be successful, he's at the bottom of your screen, number 83, Jason Hill. This running play going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. Didi is there, and I believe that's four tackles that he already has in this opening quarter. He's been everywhere. Good look at Jason Hill. And I'll tell you, now you want to know a healthy dose of respect. Every defender 
in the secondary and the linebackers for Auburn that we talked with in the last couple of days. Boy, they just hung the praise all over this guy. They think he's as good as they've ever seen. It didn't take them long to figure out that he's one of the best in the country when you look at guys like Wayne Jarrett and Jared Hicks who plays in that great system at Texas Tech. Once they got the scouting report, they said, wait a minute, this guy might be pretty good. Draw play, Wolfrich has five, six, and seven yards. Going to be third down. And this, to me, is an extremely important play because it, it still would be only five plays and the defense has to come back out here if they have to punt, if they don't pick this up. And if I were Tim Rosenbaugh, the offensive coordinator at Washington State, I would be thinking pressure from Will Muschamp. He, he's shown that he likes to bring pressure in this down and distance early in the game. Maybe a quarterback draw a brink is plenty of the athlete to get down there. Auburn comes up tight defensively. They roll the pocket, and the ball is caught. A little bit overthrown, and Chris Jordan went up and brought it down. Great effort on his part. And another first down for the Cougars. First time tonight that they have had back-to-back -back first downs. We just saw Tim Rosenball. Although he's the quarterback's coach, he does call the plays. Mike Levenseller is the offensive coordinator, but a really good job of getting him on the edge, and you saw the double team on the defensive end. He's tired of seeing his quarterback get hit in the mouth, and a re another really nice job of Jordan. Very nice hands going and getting that ball. He was stumbling out of his break. He, uh, the worst term in the world with a receiver, because it's a nice way of saying he's not real fast, but he's a possession-type <laughs> receiver. But he showed why. They got to try to stretch it. Woolwich nothing outside on the left, and look at the strength. He powers his way forward for about four more yards, and Karibi Didi is there to make the tackle number 21, the senior out of Woodbridge, Virginia. And all Woodridge is trying to do is replace maybe the best running back in the history of Washington State. Jerome Harrison, who's with the Minnesota Vikings now, led the country in rushing last year with 1,900 yards. Much different runner, 5'9", almost 230 pounds. So he can really get up there and knock guys over if he gets out of steam. Well, the running game working a little better. This is going to be a double pass. It was thrown behind and almost intercepted. Now two flags come from downfield. A flag is at the line of scrimmage, Owen, from where that one is thrown. I think it's an illegal chop block, a legal block below the waist. It looked like one of the linemen set one of the defensive linemen up, and he went and dove at his knees, the other offensive lineman. left to play opening quarter six to nothing we to two fouls on the play number 73 offense shot block number four defense pass interference so we'll take a look at Sean O'Connor this they're repeating the down so and this is a big save for Washington State the ball's under thrown watch the cut right there Mm, that's that, that's but that's not a good call. The center had released from the to defensive say, tackle. If he was engaged. He was not engaged. Yeah, that's not a good call by the umpire. So we'll do it again. Second down. They need to take it to the Auburn 46 yard line. Just over two and a half minutes to play. Opening quarter. Pass in the flat. This one complete. Bumpus on the receiving end shows his strength and speed, and he is going to be out far enough, I believe, for the first down. Eric Brock came over to make the tackle. You guys got tired of me talking about Bumpus all week. I kept telling you this guy is the key to the game. He was a soccer player from Southern California. He can run all day. He talks about soccer, how it helped his field vision. He's a great punt returner. He battled an ankle injury last year and he is so good with the ball in his hands he has scored three touchdowns in the last two years on punt returns little play action break deep in the pocket now gets this one away and impossible to bring it down Brandon Gibson trying to keep the feet in bound but it was still just too far outside Chris Browder the senior who had the sack earlier is having a whale of a game got inside the left tackle Bobby Bird that time Browders put on some weight because they moved him down to defensive tackle then they moved him back out to defensive end. Jed Collins number 41 checks into the ball game at tight end. He's right there wing to the right side and now goes in motion. They'll use him as a fullback throws a lead block big opening. 10 and a big play coming at the 15 at the 10 Aldridge is going to be knocked out of bounds inside the five yard line 
Antonio Coleman saved a touchdown after a run of 42 yards. Well, I said Wilder's pretty strong once he gets ahead of steam. The safeties, young safeties, overran that play. It was Eric Brock, the strong safety, who had that gap responsibility, and he just ran up there and did not keep backside, and Wildred saw it and really made them pay. Ninth play of the drive, and a timeout has been called by Washington State. Keep in mind, Wildridge had a 60-yard touchdown run in a scrimmage week before last up in Pullman. So let's take a timeout. Auburn 6, Washington State nothing, but the Cougars are threatening. So we are back. What has happened? That play was under review. Uh, the, the gentleman upstairs went back and looked at a replay to see if he got into the end zone. He did not. They scrimmaged first and goal from the two-yard line. Wooldridge, the lone setback. They fake it to him. Pass, touchdown. A corner of the end zone, Jason Hill. It's no longer quiet, is it? Nope. Not bad for the first catch of the night. I go back to the drive that just occurred, and the man that I put an asterisk by his name is Chris Jordan, who went high in the air to catch a very large third down play. Otherwise, they punt Auburn's offense right back out on the field. I thought it was a key play in that Absolutely. drive. Langley to attempt the extra point, trying to put Washington State on top. And he gets it. Nine plays, 80 yards for the Cougars to go in front. Let's give the assist to the offensive line. George Yarno, the offensive line coach, who coached with Will Muschamp at LSU, obviously made great uh, adjustments over there because that route took a lot of time. Hill started from the complete other side of the formation. They had receivers crossing, and the defensive backfield lost him. A really nice job of Yarno adjusting to the blitz and the defensive line pressure that they had been getting on those first couple of drives. You know, Jerry Punch will be able to, to tell us because he's he's down there, but the, the body language all of a sudden on the far side of the field, people are jumping around a little bit, but after that second series, in fact, let's go down and talk to Jerry. After the second series, Jerry, I was a little worried. They, they looked very frustrated over there. There was a lot of frustration over here on the Washington State sideline, but George Yarno got his offensive line down and basically made them believe, and there is a totally different atmosphere here right now. These players that have come all the way in a five-hour plane trip yesterday and a two-hour bus ride believe they are going to make some noise here in the heart of SEC country. Washington State, very optimistic here, a lot of energy on the Cougar bench right now. And we knew all along that if they could protect this young man, they had the tools to do it. Exactly. With Bumpus and Hill and now we see Wooldridge who's a very good running back very powerful if they can protect in the passing game they'll have a chance well let's see what Langley can do with the kickoff a couple of uh, dangerous guys back for the Auburn Tigers Brad Lester and Tristan Davis Davis playing defense again last year against Kentucky they used him as a running back folks he had well over 200 yards in the ball game very capable with the, his hands on the football Going to come down at the five-yard line, Tristan Davis. And there he goes, 30-35 up the far sideline. Langley, the kicker, knocked him out of bounds after a return of 30 yards. And let's go back to the studio. Brian Kenny, how about an update from Baton Rouge, where we will be next week? All right, LSU and Louisiana Lafayette. You know, Ron, they lead the all-time series 20 to zip. They've outscored the Raging Cajuns 542 to zero in their last 10. Yikes, Jamarcus Russell. To Brandon LaFell, it's 14 to nothing, adding to that lopsided total. Florida, meantime, gets up on top of Southern Miss and command a little bit, 21 to 7. Cal is uh, added on, but it's still pretty rough with Tennessee beating Cal at Neyland Stadium. Huh? Back here at Auburn, running play with uh, Irons, and he simply could not get started. Aaron Johnson, who was replacing Abu in this ballgame tonight, who had talked about the injury that, that he had and keeping him out of play, but they boxed him up that time for no game. And Johnson is as physical a specimen as you will see in the entire country on the defensive line. 6'6", 320 pounds. He was a tight end when he got here, so he's still trying to figure out that interior line play, but if the light bulb ever goes on, he's going to be flat unblockable. Former soccer play. Screen pass, good call 
Well, they have caught them in the proper defense, and it's going to be a first down plus about five yards as Washington State came with pressure to the outside. It's going to be a gain of 14, and Steve Dildine came over to make the tackle. Well, Al Borges is a West Coast guy, born and raised in Northern California. He was actually coaching in Indiana when they went and grabbed him to come down here. Did such a great job that first year with Jason Campbell and Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown. And he's trying to match wits right now with Tim Rosenbaugh, another West Coast. You said, you can't outdo me, Tim. Let me figure it out. Play action from under center. Brandon Cox with a dump off the safety valve. That's complete. And it will go for actually more yardage than maybe they even thought as Kenny Irons is close to the first down. One more note on Borges. When I asked him about Dolby, he said, good heavens, I've coached against Bill many, many times. and know him well and maybe even know some tendencies. I don't know. <laughs> Well, they went to they went against each other five times and Borges is very quick to point out that he was three and two in those meetings. But Bill Doba, of course, was the longtime defensive coordinator for Mike Price and Al spent time at several Pac-10 schools, Cal, UCLA and Oregon. Well, it was enough for the first down. So Auburn again across midfield, which they have been on all three of their drives here in the first quarter. Turns the corner this time, does Irons, going to go for short yardage. but. They, Auburn just continues to there's nothing fancy they're just pounding and hoping that between the heat the humidity and the pounding that in the second half it takes its toll well and that that's the one thing that Bill Doba and Rob Akey said that they noticed about Al Borges when they started studying this Auburn offense especially the latter part of last year was that he has become more conservative and with a guy like Kenny Irons and the guys that he had before Kenny Irons you're allowed to be pretty conservative. So that is the end of the first quarter here on the plains of Eastern Alabama. The Auburn Tigers trailing Washington State by a count of seven to six. Entertaining first game here in Auburn, Alabama and an entertainment on the field between the Cougars and also the Auburn Tigers. Let's take a break, seven six our count. So we are back to start the second quarter, 7-6 to six, Washington State. Everybody talking about how the change with the clock will speed up games and lesser plays. First quarter, 18 plays for the Auburn Tigers, 15 for the Washington State Cougars. About right on as far as what they would average, so it really has not been any quicker. Second down, they pitch it back to Irons. Turns the corner, gonna have about three, three and a half yards. And here's tonight's game track. It's presented by Hampton Inn. Kenny Irons in the first play, and we were just talking during the timeout. This is just speed of play. Washington State was not looking to, for this kind of quickness. You cannot see that type of speed during training camp. I mean, you can't see it even if you have a back like that. But Washington State, very lucky to hold them to three on that. But Washington State came right back. Good run by their teal back, Waldrich, who set it up. And they are on top, 7-6. Third down. They need to take it to the 31-yard line. Short drop this time, and the pass incomplete and almost intercepted. Cole Bennett, the senior tight end out of Dalton, Georgia, the intended receiver. That was Tyron Breckenridge, who was close. I think Brandon Cox might be overthinking things a little bit. That's two balls that he's thrown behind receivers. Now that time Bennett was running an option route. So the quarterback has to wait to see where he declares. But not a whole lot of pressure. He thrown the one earlier to Rodriguez behind him. And this ball just clearly behind his tight end. That's an easy first down if he makes it. Now this surprises me because this kind of length is not you, know, you think it are you know not really in his uh, suit John Vaughn to attempt a 52 yarder. He's got the distance. And he's got the accuracy. Are you ready for that? 44 yards. He broke his all-time high in the first quarter, and now he boots one 52 yards. I'm going to have to talk to Coach Tuberville after the game. He lied to us. He said anything outside of about 40 yards, we're going to send Matt Clark. But he did talk about Vaughn and how good a camp he had. His problem last year was he tended to pull the ball on long ones. That ball, yeah, that ball might have gone from 62 <laughs> oh, yards. He got plenty of that. Well, that's what 
Coach Tupperville said he's got plenty of leg. He just tended to over rotate on the long ones and hook it. But he had such a good camp, obviously feeling pretty good about him. Wow, 52 yards on the kick. But and let's go down to the sideline and check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. You know, when Tommy Tuberville told us at our meeting that after 40 yards he was going to go with someone else, we all believed him. But what happened, what actually what happened it is during the pregame warm-up, he watched Vaughn nailing him from as far out as 55 yards. I think that convinced the coach that he's going to have a good night, and that's what made him roll the dice there. I think he fully believed after 40 yards he would go somewhere else with a kicker. But in warm-ups, the young man made a believer out of him, and I think he just made a believer out of 88,000 here wow. at Jordan-Hare Stadium. I mean, guys, you got to figure, 43 was his long longest last year he kicks 44 tonight and then all of a sudden that's like a shot putter breaking his his all-time best <laughs> by, by 10 feet yeah by 10 feet talk about good confidence going forward in the season though Ron. you need that guy if you're going to win the SEC kick is one yard deep going to be returned who's shot up out to the 20 going to be stopped at around the 23 yard line well you're exactly right now Number 37 is down on the sideline, absolutely beaming. And confidence is uh, just has to be, you know, <laughs> pounding. Well, you know what has to happen now? Someone has to come over there and tell him he's not very good. Somebody has to come over and ground him a little bit. Say, hey, don't, don't get such a big head, Vaughn. It's just a couple of kicks. we got a long season ahead of us. I don't think I'd do that. <laughs> I That's think what teammates are for. I would let him just, you know, <laughs> ride in the, his glorious state right now. Auburn back on top by two. Draw play. And the tailback, Woolridge, taking people with him. That's going to be a gain of over 10 yards. Counted off at around 11. Karibi Didi holding on to him. But I'll tell you, the strong Demandre Wooldridge out of Keller, Texas, was just taking defensive backs with him. Yeah, they, it looks like he might be cramping Ooh. the way he's walking or running. I mean, this kid's a bowling ball, 230 pounds. Good patience behind the pulling guard. And that's what Wooldridge told me that he learned from Harrison was slow down, let your blocks develop. Nice job. He's got 74 yards on six carries. Pop to throw, under pressure, gets it away, and boy, that would have been better off to have been dropped. They're going to wind up losing about four, almost five yards in the play, caught by Michael Bumpus. And it was Josh Thompson who was applying the pressure. And really, those were the two biggest question marks, the defensive tackle and nose guard spot, T.J. Jackson and Wayne Dickens left. And Josh Thompson, he's not a very long fella, but he's awfully thick. And Will Muschamp said he will play a ton because he plays hard on every snap. He's, you know, hate the term, but for, for lack of a better term, he is a blue-collar guy who brings his pail to work every night. Second down and long. And you can see how it's break with an audible. Now the Auburn crowd picks up on that, and they start making more noise. And the running play will go for a loss of one, maybe two. Josh Thompson again, head manning the defense for Auburn. Alex Brink had a look to me like he had a pass play called and switched it to a run. If you saw his offensive linemen, they were sitting back a little bit. As soon as he made the audible, they tried to reposition. And Josh Thompson just plays with too much leverage. The left guard, Sean O'Connor, just couldn't get under his pads, and he drove him right into the backfield. That's exactly right. That's a horrible feeling if you're an offensive lineman when you got a defensive lineman underneath that pad level. Third down, they need to take it to the 45. Wow. Senderic Marks. What a play. Young man out of Mobile, Alabama, redshirt freshman. He was in a battle with Pat Sims to get the starting job. Just found out about four days ago he was going to get the job. All of these guys, very active defensive tackles for Auburn. I talked about put an asterisk by Chris Jordan and his key play in the scoring drive for Washington State. Put an asterisk by the entire Auburn defense for picking up this Auburn team right now on that series. Here's the boot. Good kick, but it's a line drive from the 28. Done. Who does he take a look at the 30-yard line? Williams downfield on the coverage, 43 on the kick, and two on the return. We'll be right back.
nine to seven with 11:43 left until halftime. And if you come to football in this part of the world, you know that that is the corner in front of Tumor's Drugstore, and they wrap that tree every time Auburn has success. There's no telling how many tons of toilet paper has been thrown into that tree over the years. About as much sweat as the offensive line for Auburn will lose tonight. <laughs> Brandon Cox, play action, goes deep over the middle, has a man there, caught by Rod Smith, and it's going to be a big gainer for the Auburn Tigers inside the 30-yard line to the 29. What happened, Ed? Now, this is exactly where Brandon Cox's knowledge of the offense comes in. He saw a linebacker trying to cover his inside receiver. Rob Akey got caught in a base defense, did not have enough defensive backs, and a 5'11", 220-pound linebacker is not going to cover Rod Smith. Great, great vision by the quarterback to see the mismatch. Good pickup on your part. First down from the 29-yard line. Auburn had led 6 to nothing. Washington State came back. And now the Tigers, after a distance field goal, driving the football. And here's a reminder. Now I have a question. Who do you think is tonight's MVP? You can vote for your favorite from your cell phone. In fact, we're going to let you know when the polls open during the fourth quarter tonight. Each vote, 99 cents. Standard messaging rates may apply. So my 20 votes. You've already voted it's 20 times? Almost 20 bucks, yeah. I'd like to get in on who's going to be the MVP. I'd like to have a little say in that. I will vote, but I'm tight, and it won't be 20 <laughs> times. I'll loan you a buck. But I want the penny down. Trey Smith comes into the lineup at the 22. Talked about he is a good receiver out of the backfield. Cox, great protection. Lobs one for the end zone, and the ball is caught, but caught out of bounds. And let's go back to the studio and check in once again with Brian Kenny. What do you have for us, young man? Ron, Oklahoma, of course, the tumultuous offseason. Red Bomar booted. Paul Thompson has been picked off twice. And here, Corey White for UAB. Makes it a goal ball game here, 7-7 now at the half. That was the end of an 80-yard drive. UAB making it a game against number 10, Oklahoma. And UCLA here picked off Tommy Grady at Oklahoma transfer from Utah. Alteron Werner brings it all the way back for the Bruins. 28 yards, 14-10 UCLA. Back here at Auburn, third down. Blitz comes, they throw a screen back into the short side of the field. Here's Irons, watch him in the open field. Broke one, broke two, and then a third tackle, and he'll have the Auburn first down as Ben Grubbs, number 69, threw a paving block on the play. It was Grubbs downfield against M. Christo Bruce. Here's, watch the left guard. He's going to sneak out there and get out there late, but he's very good in space. Bruce, the defensive end, had actually dropped into coverage. What a really nice job getting down the field. And Kenny Irons just does not quit running. We were talking about how quickly he makes moves. When he does that spin, he's already headed back upfield. Everything he does, he gets going back towards the goal line so quickly. On first down, and here comes that reverse. And boy, it not only didn't work, it got clobbered. They have been faking this play, giving the ball up the middle. And they were going to go with the end around to Courtney Taylor. This time they gave it to him, and he got a lot of the Palouse on that one as he got whacked in the mouth. With a guy like Kenny Irons running the way he is, I don't know how cute you need to get right now. In the middle of this offensive line is awfully good. I mean, I know you want to keep the defense honest, but you're going back to a fifth-year senior defensive end, M. Cresto Bruce, and he was not fooled. And Frampton's the man who stayed at home, forced it back inside, kept out on the tackle. Good job by him. Here's Irons. Got the legs pumping. Hit from behind by Washington State, which actually is going to help him get another yard. And it is going to be third down, and they're going to need to take it down to the three. Tackled by Abdullah. Well, I would think that Tommy Tuberville is getting tired of field goals. With all these good drives and Kenny Irons running the way he's running, would not be surprised at some type of fade Courtney Taylor is their best receiver on the outside. I would put him out there on a 5-10 cornerback and maybe play a little jump ball. Irons, by the way, 64 yards on 10 carries. Third down, line to make is the three. Brad Lester, the lone setback, as Rodriguez resets. Pressure up the middle, and he's going to be sacked. That is Scott Davis, the senior out of Kennewick, Washington, and the first time that Washington State has gotten to Cox tonight. 
Well, this was a breakdown on protection. Davis at linebacker, so he's just lined up outside. Nobody's going to bump out to pick him up. Tight end releases. The left guard has to bump the tackle out. King Dunlap, Grubb stayed inside. The tight end, Bennett, released. That's an easy one for Davis. Just get in there and make sure you keep your head up and make the tackle. Well, right now, number 37, John Vaughn, who has just kicked his career long 52 yards, going to try this one from 30 yards. Ball is down, plenty of distance, and he's made it four a four on the night. Auburn 12 and Washington State 7. Let's take a timeout. 7.37 left in his opening half from Auburn to Alabama. So our new score is Auburn 12, Washington State 7. John Vaughn struggled early in the year. We talked about this is last season, but here he is against Georgia. After missing five against LSU, he kicks the winner on a 77-yard game-winning drive. That was with six seconds on the clock, and that one helped him right the ship, so to speak. Tonight, not only accuracy, but he breaks his all-time best by almost 10 yards. Here's Clark to kick it off. Clark has been amazing. He's been nine and ten yards deep, and that's off the one-inch tee. I don't know what he'd do off a of two-inch. <laughs> it might be in Atlanta. You know, Tommy Tuberville, I, I followed him. This is the first ball game I've ever called of his, but I've followed him for a long time. Of course, he went through that difficult time when it, it was rumored that they were trying to get Bobby Petrino to come over here. But when you treat your players like he's doing tonight with his kicker, listen, he had a bad year last year. He had those five misses against LSU. But he won the confidence of Tommy Tuberville back in camp and in warmups tonight. And so he goes and he lets this young man kick a longer field goal than he'd ever attempted here, and he makes it. That sends a message to the whole team that, guys, you can make a few mistakes and then you can rebound from it. Draw play. Whoa, what a hit. He gets taken out of bounds hard by David Irons. <laughs> Well, Daryl Hootsana played the last couple of years at Grossmont College. He's starting to learn you can't run sideways down in the SEC because uh, he's as fast as they come, but he's doing a little too much dancing against the guys in the blue jerseys. Yeah, the pursuit of ball clubs like Auburn who have this kind of speed. In fact, we, we saw some of the first half of Tennessee and uh, California, and Cal was having trouble trying to move side to side. Up the sideline, ball is knocked away, and a good defensive play by David Irons on that one. Brother of Kenny Irons, if you don't know. And David Irons, he's suffered a hamstring injury. He missed 10 days of camp. This is great corner play. Watch the push off by Hill, and he stays right there. That is great play. And Will Muschamp talks about judging the ball. You not only have to find it, but you have to be able to adjust to it. That was great adjustment by Irons. So here's the situation. 7-15 left to play opening half. Woldridge the lone setback. It is third down. They got to take it to the 30-yard line. Here comes pressure. Tripped over his own offensive lineman and went down. It was Quentin Groves with the pressure. But Brink was running for his life and got tangled up with one of his offensive linemen's feet and went down. And Quentin Groves was a guy that this defensive staff challenged to get a little tougher and get your effort up. Look at that. And he blew Just right by. But it was because of that pressure he goes up and runs. Is that doing he's running into there? Yeah, I, I really couldn't tell. Rollins. I believe it may have been rolling. Yeah. If you could see, he caught his ankle. This is the fourth time that Washington State will have punted tonight, and the Tigers had to return out. And it's his poorest kick. Taken by Dunn. Tries to go to the left side. And I'll tell you what, actually, rather than out kicking the coverage, because they did have the return on, that shorter kick worked in Washington State's favor. 36 on the boot, two on the return. We'll be right back. Well, beginning with the 1985 of the Heisman Trophy winner, Bo Jackson to Auburn has churned out some really, really outstanding running backs. Stephen Davis was after Bo Jackson. Then Rudy Johnson in 2000. 
Cadillac Williams, Carnell 2001 to 2004, and Ronnie Brown 2001 to 2004. And the amazing thing about that is you take a look at Kenny Irons, who last year in his first season led the SEC. Reverses this throw out and throws it complete for the 38-yard line to lead guess, the senior out of Trustville. But the interesting thing is how Tommy Tuberville was able to juggle two not good but two outstanding running backs and keep them both happy. And it was a lot to do with Al Borges coming in and saying, you know what, we don't need a true fullback. And Ronnie ba Brown invented a position here at Alwyn called the F-back, and Stewart now plays that. They have so much depth, they're using it again. Stewart is in the ball game, number 32, junior out of Alcoa, Tennessee. Handoff goes to Lester, though, and Lester is going to take it for enough yardage to pick up the first down. And I want to make sure I get this story in because I think that we need to pay tribute to a young man that not only does well on the field, but Carl Stewart, number 32, also does extremely well in his academics. Carl has already graduated in one course load and he's working on a second degree right now and folks on top of that we think in terms of football players of being meatheads right this young man plays the violin and I asked him yesterday he said it's classical and he said I don't bring it here to school I said you don't think the guys would make fun do you he said they might screen pass to Lester and he's loose Down of the night by the Auburn Tigers. Vaughn tries to make it a 19 to 7 ball game. This play is under further review. I think what they're looking is did Lester step out of bounds? I, I thought he should have cut back, but he thought he had it, and he started running out of steam there at the end. Got awfully close to stepping out of bounds. I believe that's what they're looking at. We, as you know, we have a lot of rule changes, but particularly with you get a challenge. Each each coach gets a challenge. Let's take a look. Well, actually, no, he did not step out of bounds. Well, then I don't know what they'd be reviewing because that doesn't even look close. No, it really doesn't. Anyway, the point I was going to make, each coach with a challenge, this has not been challenged. This is something. They review every play, but every play cannot be challenged by the men upstairs. Mm -hmm. This is a play that they can like pass interference, that no. even if there is pass interference, they cannot upstairs make a judgment on that. I'm really not sure, unless they thought maybe he was juggling the ball before he went in, because uh, clearly they're looking awfully close to the screen to see what's going on. That's a pretty intent look for what we just saw. I mean, I don't know what that replay would have shown that would make them concerned that that was not a touchdown by Brad Lester. And you can see Jim was down really close looking at that monitor. After further review, the play stands as called on the field. Touchdown. Jerry Punch, if you can hear me, let's check with you down on the sideline. You got more on what just happened. Officials told me they were checking for possession. Ed Cunningham mm -hmm. was exactly right. Whether he was juggling the ball as he passed the pylon, and that's the reason for the review, guys. Well, that okay. happened in the Georgia game today. On the punt return, guy went to celebrate, lost on about the two-yard line. It was a touchback. So, Jim Allison, the man upstairs who was down looking closely at that monitor, came up with a decision. Play stands as it was called. Extra point is up and good by Vaughn. So we'll hold it right here. 4.59 left in the first half as we take one more look. Probably worth reviewing because the ball did come out when he landed. You just want to make sure because if he if, the, if he's juggling the ball before he hits the ground there, that's a touchback. Washington State's ball the other way. So I guess you could say that would be a game changer. 
Well, next Saturday night, it's the rematch we've all been waiting for. Jim Trestle leads the number one Ohio State Buckeyes into Austin to tangle with Mac Brown's number three Texas Longhorns, last year's winner of the national title. And uh, living in Austin, I can tell you, that town has been pumped up about that football game for a long time. Both teams had very impressive starts today. Texas with a young quarterback, Colt McCoy, who grew up in a city of 700 people, went to Jim Ned High School, which is a two-way school in the state of Texas. And today he started with all the poise in the world in front of a crowd that's over 100 times larger than his hometown. You know why I think he's going to be a great quarterback? Because he might have the best name ever for a Texas quarterback. Could you... I mean, did his parents name him? Think, you know, someday this young man's going to start at the University of Texas. Because that was his coach. Yeah, so, good point. <laughs> Maybe SMU would have been. <laughs> Clark sets to kick it off. And again. The distance is always the same, nine yards deep. Let's go down to the sideline. Jerry Punch, you've got more on the reduction in the size of that kicking tee. Exactly, Ron. If you look at these two tees with the naked eye, it's hard to tell a difference. Now, this tee to my left here, this is the new tee that has a one-inch platform. Actually, the ball, the nose of the ball will be just one inch off of the ground here from the bottom of the tee. This is the old tee that they used last year here at Auburn, and it's really hard to tell, but if you look very closely, you can see the nose of the ball actually goes further down inside the tee where it is two inches off the ground. So the difference is, by using the one-inch tee, you have lowered the center of gravity of the football. It's sort of like teeing up a, a golf ball, and it goes a little bit higher and a little shorter guys okay jerry thank you first down Wolfridge obviously over the cramps he really gets knocked down hard but he also has a gain of very close to 10 yards on the play before that last drive for auburn i made the comment when we were off air that 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 i was concerned about that drive for washington state defensively that would have been a long drive Washington State has not been able to rotate any of their defensive linemen. Amu, the defensive tackle who had to stay home with a stress fracture, Johnson and Patoy Tua have had to go every down. So right now, Washington State, they need to give their defense some rest, or this could get a little uglier before halftime. Second down and really a down to play with, but they're going to keep it conservative, pick up the first down, which they do. Ron Franklin along with Ed Cunningham and Dr. Jerry Punch coming to you from Auburn, Alabama. ESPN2 Saturday night primetime college football. And right now we're looking at just under four minutes to play until halftime. And Auburn with a 19 to 7 lead. And to go back to more that, that Ed was talking about defensively, we have seen very few substitutions coming on and off the field for Washington State. It's, it's not as hot as it has been, but it's a warm night. Here's the throw. Brink has it complete out to the 35-yard line. Tackle made immediately. That's Chris Jordan on the receiving end. And even though it's not hot, Ron, it's still the first game of the season. Yeah. And you, you're just not in game shape. You can you can condition all summer long. There's Patoy too. It goes almost 300 pounds at six foot eight. He's not been off the field for one snap in this first half. And you're just not quite in game shape in the first ball game. he has in his first half but boy he's been outstanding and they needed dd to step up let me make a point on the washington state side they're misting to make it even cooler on the auburn side they're not using the misters i think they should flag auburn for taunting <laughs> but see you don't see the mist coming off those uh, fans right there seven tackles five solo for dd option play ball is on the ground picked up nicely by Wooldridge. And then he gets knocked out of bounds. And it looks like Tristan Davis and Wolfridge go down. Davis dropped his shoulder. I don't. Well, we'll we'll wait and see. As far as Wooldridge is concerned, I thought it was a reoccurrence of cramps coming on. As both players are very close to each other down there on the sideline, and the two uh, staffs, the two medical staffs, looking over both players. So we'll have a stoppage here for just a moment with 221 on the clock. One more look at the play. 
Davis, you had mentioned the running back, so he's still kind of figuring out that no, he dropped his head. Yeah. You know, they worked all camp long. Will Muschamp is a big believer in hitting guys up high, especially his defensive backs. And Davis, a former running back, still figuring out you don't drop your head when you go to hit somebody because you'll catch a stinger or even worse. I started to say that that's really dangerous. Yes. Really dangerous. Tristan is up and is, as you can see is being helped off. But uh, now as far as uh, Demandre is concerned. I'm hoping it's only the cramps that there's nothing else wrong with the young man. I think it's he needs to get to the locker room and get some fluid in him so that he could can contribute in the second half. He's been outstanding in the first half of play. As you can see he doesn't want to put any weight on that right leg. Things go from bad to worse for Washington State in the injury department. We've talked a lot about the guys on defense being down, but this has been their only productive part of the running game in the first half is Woldridge. Jerry Punch, let's check in with you down on the sideline. You got more on the injuries. As you watch the crowd and listen to the crowd now applaud as Woolridge walks off or limps off, the physicians came over a moment ago, and what they were examining was the middle part of his thigh, just outside of the thigh pad where there was contact. Just right above the right knee is where he was uh, complaining of pain as they were palpating underneath the pants, and he was unable to put weight on initially, now walked off. That is good news for the Cougar faithful, guys. Thanks, Jerry. Hope we see him in the second half. He has been very entertaining. His blunt appears to... Come forth with his fifth kick of the night. Great coverage kick, very high. Fair catch is signal for it and is made by Dunn at around the 26 yard line. So 203 showing on the clock left in uh, this first half of play. Well, coming up on Monday, the Florida State Seminoles, number 11, taking on number 12, Miami. And it is presented by Dish Network, full circle, as we have the kitchen sink being thrown at this one, as far as the networks that are involved. And we are back at play as the handoff goes to Irons, breaks a tackle, breaks another, and is going to have a gain of about seven yards on the play. First man to hit him was number 94, the Crystal Bruce. And right now, I am not surprised. Auburn's going to go in a little bit of a hurry up, but I wouldn't be surprised, Ryan, if they just keep pounding it. They're starting to gain such an advantage on Washington State in conditioning. A score, I almost think you just need to pound them a little bit. Look to his right, nothing there. Threw it back to the left and has it complete. And a marker is down. Lee Guess on the receiving end. The Where this one is thrown, yeah. and normally he's offensive holding. The old King Dunlap, six foot nine. Rocky Good, our referee tonight, the officials from the Southeastern Conference. Personal foul, illegal. Contact to the head, number 50, offense. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. Still second down. That's uh, Joe Cope, the center. That is the first assessed penalty of the night. And a story on Joe Cope, when you look at him, he's not 6'6", 340 like a he lot of these he guys. He doesn't fit, does he? He is 6 feet, 276 from Andalusia, Alabama. As you take a look at what happened, and you can see the head being rocked back right there. He's getting whacked in the head, and he whacks somebody in the head. So <laughs> I don't see a penalty there. But they cannot take the starting position away from him. Tommy Tupperville said he simply has the biggest heart of anybody on the team. As the running play goes to Trey Smith, and he'll take it out almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Cope is really a good story, though, and he just says, my dad loved to lift weights, got me started doing it, and he said, I just have an approach that uh, you don't make excuses, you go out and give 100% every time you play. Tough to get a guy like that off the field. I, I think Washington State should use their timeouts. Why not make Auburn punt? Come after it, you get a block, and get a big play. Well, you've got two of them. I wouldn't take them in the locker room with me. Third down and 11. They need to take it to the 37. Cox steps up into the pocket, gonna be sacked. 
And I would imagine, yeah, Washington today, are they going to call a timeout? Yeah, to stop the clock at 38.4 seconds. Aaron Johnson making the tackle. So let's take the timeout with him. 19 Auburn, 7 Washington State. Brian Kenny here in the Nerve Center of ESPN Football Primetime Pulse. Take a look around at the games right now on the ESPN family of networks. Calvin Johnson touchdown catch. Georgia Tech leading Notre Dame and Arkansas very physical. Fired up. Got whacked by USC last year. Very tight so far. 3-0 run. All right, Brian, thanks. Here's a booming punt by Bliss. His first punt of the night. All during camp, he's been kicking it beyond 50 yards. And I think he just did on that one as well. As with the coverage, tackle made it to 27. 50 yards on the nose, two yards on the return. Michael Bumpus, the return man. Well, you got to be smart if you're Washington State here. You're lucky that you got away with four field goals from Auburn. They had a bunch of yards that only made 19 points for Auburn. And I think you just can't do anything dumb here and give them any kind of. I'd be happy going to the, maybe taking a knee and just taking it to the house. Pitch back goes to Usana. Tries to get outside on the right. He's going to have about six yards on the play, maybe seven. And it's a, it's tough to see Wildridge being taken on to the locker room, but uh, with his condition, he can't really help him, so get him in there and uh, start administering aid, and maybe we can see him in the second half. He called a timeout, 13.7 seconds left. You go on top of the big one, I assume? Yeah, I think, I, listen, it's a safe play. I mean, even if you throw an interception, hopefully you've got enough guys down there to make it. But I, I wouldn't do anything on our side, Washington State side. I'm talking like I'm the offensive coordinator. I wouldn't do anything on my side of that 50. Uh, I would heave it and see if you can't get something big. You, you just can't make a mistake on your side of the field. Let me ask you this, Ed. Uh, at halftime, the, the way this, uh, the tempo of this football game has gone, and uh, with Auburn now up uh, 19 to 7, and as you said, it could be larger. But if you're Bill Doba, what do you tell these kids? Uh, you know, it's, you don't, people think you make speeches, win one for the Gipper. I don't you don't do you that can. at halftime. No, I don't think you can. I, you know, Doba is fighting not having many defensive linemen. I mean, they're just going to start getting worn out in the second half. I think you just try to keep them up. Get some fluids in them, maybe eat a couple of horn slices, and see what they have in the tank in the second half. I, I'm fearful that Washington State may run out of gas on that defensive line in the second half. Understand it has been cool in the Palouse. There's nothing you can do about that. No, no. and, and uh, the, the injury to Amu is figuring big in this ballgame and will be huge in the second half. So let's see if Auburn drops off and believes that they might try to go for something large as they have dropped off their secondary deeper than they have been. White tardy, the lone setback. This pass going to be slung high and wide, just incomplete. Trying to find Bumpus at around midfield, 7.9 seconds left. It's pretty dangerous throw there. I mean, he, he ended up getting it out of bounds, but that was a comeback. If he underthrows that by accident, that ball could be going the other way. Bill Doble pacing the sideline. Of course, you all are aware of the story of what happened with uh, with, uh, with his wife who finally succumbed to cancer last year. It was a very long and difficult season for the head coach. He's a class guy, and he ha has dealt with it not only accordingly, but extremely well. As Tardy takes it straight ahead, and we see double zeros on the clock. And as they head to the locker room, it is Auburn 19 and the Washington State Cougars 7. And before we take it back to the studio, Dr. Jerry Punch is going to visit with the head coach of the Auburn Tigers. Doc? Well, Tommy Tupperville, 19 points in the first half. What pleases you most about the play of your offense here in the first half? Well, that we started adjusting. We didn't do very well, obviously, with the four field goals, and we stalled. They've taken a lot of chances on defense, and we adjusted, started throwing screen passes, caught them, caught them with their pants down, so to speak, a couple of times. But uh, we've got to be more consistent running the ball the second half. You said you had some questions about your young defense. What did you learn in the first half? Well, we're fast. We overrun it a couple of times, and we missed a couple of tackles. But looks like we started to adjust a little bit. We've got a lot of young guys out there playing. Hopefully they learned enough the first half to kind of slow down and just play their defense second half. Hey, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Ron? Okay, Dr. Punch, 19-7. to 7. Auburn leads it. Now let's go to Brian Kenny for the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report.
I think Coach Tuberville, when he was talking to Dr. Punch on the way out, saying we just need to finish. You know, we got too many field goals, although I'm happy with Vaughn. They need to close it out a little bit more on offense. Interesting comment he had uh, to Dr. Punch also about the speed on defense. And he said, we've, in fact, we've overrun a few things with those young players. Hopefully they'll get a better grasp as this kick is returnable from the six by Davis. Tristan Davis got hit from behind and knocked forward for 15 more yards. <laughs> That's how fast he is. 36 yards on the return, and that goes under the category of sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doesn't, and it's working for the Auburn Tigers tonight. If you're Washington State, what do you got to do, or what will they do, do you think? They, we saw offensively that they do have the tools to do it. If they can get protection for Brank, and that's a big if, because this is a very fast, aggressive defense for Auburn, but they cannot have this defense out on the field. These two guys played every Every single defensive snap in that first half, and there they are right back there. They're just not going to be able to hang in there if Washington State can't get a goal on offense. Here's Kenny Irons. Cuts it back against the grain, and he's open. Hang on. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Irons. 58 yards on the opening play of the second half. He cuts back, plants it, and gone. I told you during one of the breaks, I like to watch to see how fast a guy can cut back. How many steps does it take for him to get back? Kenny Irons is a one-step cutback. He plants his outside foot, and he's back the other side. So difficult to defend. 58 yards, first play of the second half, all set up as you take a look at an injury for the Washington State Cougars. I believe that's Aaron Johnson. And with Ahi Amu at home with a stress fracture in his foot, we just on that play talked about those two guys, him and Patoy Tua, playing every snap. I'm just not even sure who Washington State can put in the ball game now. They're going to have to go to some type of three-down lineman, four-linebacker defense, I would suspect. You see some of the uh, – take a look at this left side of your screen – and that's a clean block. That, that is not a penalty over there. I believe it was Duckworth coming back. His head was in front. He was going to finish the block for Kenny Irons. Not, not a dirty block by Duckworth by any stretch. Aaron Johnson, the injured player, junior out of Fairfield, California. And when you're 6'6", 6 310, you got a full head of steam going, and you get hit by someone who's even larger than you. That is a jolt that your body is not ready for. And he's got braces on both knees. And, and that hit is exactly what those braces are designed for. They're not, those braces aren't very good if you're doing something laterally. But if something hits you on the side of the knee, a lot of times what will happen is that brace will shoot the shock down into the ankle. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's not where Johnson feels that injury right now. You know, Kenny Irons got a little cocky at the end of that run, quite frankly. Didn't run. keep, didn't keep uh, his pedal to the metal there, did no, he? No, he was knew that the Washington State defender was not going to get there and did a little showboating towards the end. Wow. <laughs> it looked like that left leg was going to sneak out, but no, he's, he must he's be a little, bow, a little bow-legged to bring that left leg back in. He's legal. Should have finished the run, though. Don't don't make it close. So they are uh, reviewing the play, but as you can tell by the replay that we have, uh, I would be shocked if if they said that anything other than a touchdown. That was Tyron Brackenridge who was uh, in pursuit. Well, and you could see. Kenny Irons' coach coming over and telling him exactly what After I was just saying. After further review, it. the play stands as called on the field. Touchdown. Jim Allison, uh, the gentleman who is our replay official tonight. And you could see very quickly he had his headset off, which means I'm satisfied with what I've seen. And normally that means that, that not going to be contest contested any further. John Vaughn to attempt the extra point. So credit that man. <laughs> 
Kenny Irons with a 58 yard touchdown run. Good job of the holder to get that one down. Extra point is good. 26 to 7. Auburn on top. Let's go to the sideline and uh, check in with Dr. Punch. Jerry? Well, Ron, I talked with Washington State head coach Bill Dover coming out at halftime, and it was almost prophetic what he had to say. He said, you know, I was surprised we're not moving the football better on offense than we did in the first half. He said, our defense was fighting their tails off. we got to focus, though, on tackling Kenny Irons better in the second half. And you saw what happened in that first possession. He said, but offensively, we have got to move the football but it is not good news though here on the Cougar sidelines because we are being told that DeMondre Woolridge their sophomore tailback will not play the remainder of the night he has a very deep left thigh bruise and will be coming out of the locker room very shortly but he'll be on crutches guys Jerry before you go uh, one other did they say is it going to be Hutsana will it be Dwight Tardy or will they alternate those two as far as tailback it looks like an alternating system. They talked about uh, maybe using multiple tailbacks. They didn't exactly square in on one. When I asked him, he said it could be any two or three in that list, Ron. Okay. Thanks very much, Jerry. Great job. Well, here's a, the numbers, and they, they tell a, a tough tale as far as why the Cougars have got to get something going. This is what they've done so far. And really, Woldridge was their only pure running back. So what you would expect from Washington State, they're very good at spreading you out. I think a lot of one back, no back. I would expect Hutsana to be in there and use him on some screens, some underneath draws. But I would expect Brink to, to spread him out. And wouldn't be too surprised if they went with a little bit of a hurry up, uh, no huddle offense. Got a good look at Hutsana, who's number one. This kick is uh, going to be returnable from the goal line. And it's a Hutsana. 15 at the 20. And it's going to be stopped at around the 24th. You know, we have not said anything more about Alex Brink, who was suffering from a throat ailment anyway. And uh, we were wondering out loud to each other before the ball game if they might not have to go to a no huddle because it's hand signals anyway, rather than him having to bark out stuff. And he's tried to, to audible a couple of times. I don't know if it was his voice or the 87,000 people in orange. Maybe it was a combination of the two, but they're going to need to speed things up a little bit offensively. This game's going to start shortly with Kenny Irons. Dwight Tardy in the ball game at tailback, and here's Bumpus. Breaks off the tackle. Going to have a gain of about 13 yards in the play. Michael, a junior out of Culver City, California, showing you the burst that he has. You know, one of the things when we were talking to Tommy Tuberville and Will Muschamp about this offense, realize at Washington State that they have been running a version of the three-step, five-step quick passing attack since Dennis Erickson became the head coach back in 1983. So it's, it's almost like a high school system that's been around for 20-plus years. So these guys know this system. Well, the snap was fumbled, and getting on it was Dwight Tardy, freshman out of Santa Fe Springs, California. Browder is the man who was there applying pressure for the Auburn Tigers. So it's uh, going to be a loss on first down. It'll be second down and 12. So the problems continue to mount for Coach Doba. Well, and they have to do something to keep that defense off. Uh, now Aaron Johnson, who knows if he's going to be able to come back in, but they need to be going forwards, not backwards. Got a look at Josh Doolin there, the center. Short drop pass is tipped away, and that's a nice job by Jonathan Wilhite. And let's go down and check with Dr. Jerry Punch, and he's got more on that injury. Hey, Ron, uh, a Cougar orthopedist, Egg Tenstad, just told me that uh, the update on Aaron Johnson, their junior left tackle, is that he has a contusion on his hip and back and what he called a clip, what we're calling a block, but uh, a contusion on the side and back. He should be back in the ballgame here next uh, possession. Well, that's good. That's good news. Two of seven on third down conversions for the Cougars. They need to take it out to midfield to hold on to it. Rank way overthrown on that one. Bumpus, the intended receiver. And you can see him looking back at Alex Brink saying, hey, I'm open. Get the ball to me. And I wouldn't want this guy back on the field. If I'm Washington State, I'm thinking, I'm thinking some kind of fake, Ron. I, I just feel like the momentum has gone so far to Auburn that you just don't want your defense going back out on the field because they're going to get a heavy dose of Kenny Irons if they do. Blunt. In the ball game to punt. This is punt number six. Robert Dunn, the deep man for the Tigers. 
good coverage kick, wobbly kick, and a uh, fair catch is made at the 19 by Dunn. So let's take a timeout. 12.53, remaining third quarter. 26 for Auburn and 7 for Washington State. So it's Auburn 26 to 7, 12.53 left in the third. And Kenny Irons already over 100 yards in this ball game tonight. And some of his highlights, if you joined us just shortly ago. Pretty amazing that he had one carry last year in the first ball game against Georgia Tech, but was not ready to go, had not learned how to be a practice player yet. Picked it up about week three, and it's been history since. You see Washington State's gone to a three-man front, putting in the extra linebacker because of an absence of defensive linemen, and uh, Irons that time on a very short gain. Here are uh, his numbers on the evening as we go early in the third quarter. As the tackle is made by Abdullah. And I think it was a combination of things for Kenny Irons. He, he admitted to us yesterday when we were chatting with him that his confidence took a shot. You know, he left South Carolina, didn't see odd eye with Lou Holtz, thought there was another player, player getting some preferential treatment. Then he felt like he was labeled as a transfer, did the scout team for a year, and then when he wasn't practicing like he should, not playing much early on, he said it took him a little while to start feeling like the player that he is. Short drop, quick pass right over the middle, and that's Courtney Taylor. And the young man who led the conference in receiving two years ago is going to have a first down out to the 40-yard line. Tackled by Frampton. Frampton has had a good ball game for the Cougars. He's been all over, but it's been too many tackles in that secondary by him instead of a little closer to the line of scrimmage. And Courtney Taylor is an NFL talent. This senior battled an ankle injury all last year, and everyone kind of, you know, they lost three receivers that had over 1,000 career receiving yards, and they thought, oh, no, the, the passing game's gone at Auburn. All they're going to be able to do is run it. He said, you know, I'm a little upset I didn't make any preseason all SEC teams. I'm pretty good. Play action. Pass. This one caught by Smith. And then it goes down. And the three receivers that they lost were all playing in the National Football League. Mix, Aruma Shadu, and also Obamano. And uh, those those guys, yeah, they they left what seemingly was going to be a big hole. But you just saw Rod Smith catch the ball. Courtney Taylor is here. Rodriguez, a young receiver that's showing a lot of promise. So they've got depth. And Rod Smith was the nicest surprise in training camp for these coaches. Former walk-on. He won the job in their last scrimmage. Carl Stewart comes back into the ball game at tailback. Young man that we told you is working on his second degree, graduated in three years. And Carl is going to take it close to the first down as Bruce is there defensively. Not going to have the first. It's going to be a third down and short. Michael Berger, number 77, checking into the ball game at defensive tackle. And they're taking out uh, Corey Evans, one of the linebackers. Corey, a, a sophomore actually out of Lena, Louisiana. And a young fellow that they think has uh, a lot of upside. Two tight ends, Bennett and Trump. Third down, they need to take it to the 50 yard line. Turman comes into the ball game at fullback. Carl Stewart the tailback and they'll give it to him. He is right hard at the line of scrimmage. He's not going to have the first down. Not going to have it. I believe Davis was the first man. Scott Davis, number 42, out of Kennewick, Washington. And also Eric Frampton. They were, they were outnumbered on this side. You got two guys that you can't block. Fullback can only get one of them. So the outside linebacker, Davis, takes the fullback, and Trent, the middle linebacker, finishes it up. Cox went to check that at the line of scrimmage and didn't count the extra body on that side. Only the second time that Auburn has had to punt the football tonight. Cody Bliss, his first punt, 50 yards tonight. It's Bumpus, the deep man. And this is a, an end over end kick. But the most important thing for the Auburn ball club is. It stayed away from Bumpus, then hit the ground and took a big Auburn roll. That's a 42-yard boot. 26 to 7. Auburn leaves. We'll be right back. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. 
those uh, cheeseburger cheeseburgers <laughs> looks like a pretty good idea here in uh, just a short time. Busy place. As you take a look at uh, Hugh Nall, the offensive line coach for the Auburn Tigers on the sideline. Gary Rogers has come in at quarterback. And the handoff goes to Hutsana, who sweeps the left side. Gary Rogers, the book on him, very strong arm in his his come a long way. Yeah, when they were working during training camp, Tim Rosenbaugh was working with him. He, he's such a big, powerful guy, but he tends to come off sometimes on the ball. This is, Brink is not injured. This is a decision by Washington State to get their quarterback, their second string quarterback, some experience in a big crowd like this. You never know when you may need them during the season. Short drop, and that one uh, goes to Cody Boyd. First time that we've seen him tonight. So we get a report from Dr. Punch down on the sideline that, that Brink is fine. It's exactly what uh, Ed is suggesting, that they want to give an opportunity for the number two guy, Rogers, to uh, get more than yeah, scrimmage, absolutely. but uh, some time in front of a big group. Brink's number 7 of 14, 44 yards and a touchdown. And I feel sure we're going to see him again tonight. Blitz coming off the corner. Quick pass over the middle. Bumpus. And he'll be tackled at the 30-yard line, maybe the 31. And, and you said, I mean, Rodgers has talent. I mean, there, there's no doubt about that. And uh, I think the coaches just want to see a little unhappy with him, quite frankly, through training camp. And uh, they want to see what he can do. And yeah, let me make a point of what just happened right there. We have seen so seldom tonight. Coach Doba's team has played behind the change. That's an eight and a half yard ahead of down it. on on first down. They got it down to play with. They it's yeah. been the second and third and long. I think night. that's only the second one. They've been ahead of the chains all night. Yeah. Here comes pressure. Ball is delivered complete this time to number four Gibson, and Brandon, who was a sophomore, gets his first catch of the night. And Merrill Johnson, number 55, a sophomore linebacker, comes over to make the tackle. Well, Roger sure looks the part, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Big guy stands in there. He's he's got a really nice release of the ball and 6'5, 241. And I like this decision, quite frankly, by Bill Doba. You, you, we were talking uh, during the break that you don't want a game like this if you do end up losing and get some guys beat up to linger the entire season. Get some of these guys in there and get some experience. Rodgers this time from the shotgun. Wings it out in the flat as it complete. That's going to be enough for the first down as Jason Hill came back, caught the football, and that is a long throw <laughs> on the line now. I was going to say. He was on this side of the hash mark and threw it all the way to the far sideline. And there was great coverage on yeah. that side as well. Let's watch the throwing motion of Rodgers. Well, just inside that hash mark, but that's still, that's a long way to put that thing on a line. And I like Rodgers' motion. He doesn't have that long, extended throwing motion. He's got a nice flick of the wrist, and the ball gets there in a hurry. He's 4-4, 35 yards. Crowd comes to life, wants this defense to step up and make a stop. Wide open over the middle is Boyd, the tight end. At the 10, at the 5, touchdown Washington State. And I'm telling you, Rodgers has come in here and ignited the Cougars in a very short period of time. And here is where Will Muschamp was very nervous about these young safeties. That is safety responsibility. The tight end down the middle of the seam. When you're in zone, someone has to see the release of the tight end. He's walked away from the line of scrimmage, and no one saw him. I, I mean, Boyd's kind of a smaller fella, so I could see why you would overlook the six foot eight, 262 pound tight end. Well, what a try. That's 90 <laughs> yards in six plays in a minute and 38 seconds. And all of a sudden, a hush has come over this crowd here at Auburn as the extra point is up and good by Langley. And with 7-14 left to play in the third period, our new score, Auburn 26, Washington State 14. Cougars trying to come back. Stay with us. Brian Kenny here on ESPN Screaming. Primetime Pulse, three games on the ESPN family of networks. Brady Quinn with a keeper. It's 10-7, Georgia Tech at the half. Calvin Johnson, five catches for 94 yards. C.J. Gable with a three-yard touchdown run. USC leading Arkansas 10-0 in the second. Let's go back to Ron Franklin and Auburn. All righty, thanks very much. Here's a look at Wooldridge on the sideline. Young tailback who was out of uh, Keller, Texas. 
with the deep thigh bruise, and we're not going to see him again tonight. I'm not surprised at the Georgia Tech score, and I'll tell you why. John Tenuta came in this building last year and just whipped up on a favored Auburn football team, and he really gives you a lot to think about with his blitzes and just unusual aggressiveness. Well, you know, when we were talking to Coach Tuberville the other day, in 2004 when this team went undefeated, they started ranked 17th in the country. And that's really what ended up hurting them at the end of the season, not being able to go play for the national championship. And he's a big proponent of saying we shouldn't start voting in the polls until the end of September, early October. I believe, I believe strongly that that's the case, but th they decide against that because we don't know how good these teams are. Notre Dame, their secondary was horrible last year, and Calvin Johnson showing that again tonight. So first down for the 20-yard line. And Kenny Irons, nothing there, and he's going to be dropped for a yard loss. Ron Franklin, along with Ed Cunningham and Dr. Jerry Punch, coming to you from Auburn, Alabama. Our first game of the year in ESPN 2 primetime. And Auburn favored in this ball game, and actually looked as though they were going to make a total runaway of it. And then a changing of the guard at quarterback, and Gary Rogers, a sophomore, came in and directed his team on a 90-yard drive in just six plays. So it's 26-14 and a stop on first down. So it's second and long for Auburn. Let's see if the Cougars can get the ball back and work magic again on offense. Courtney Cox going to go long. Brandon Cox, I should say, intended for Courtney Taylor. Couldn't come up with a reception covered by Tyron Brackenridge. And that's just nice coverage there. Ron, it feels to me like Auburn's on cruise control right now. They, they, Washington State brought in Gary Rogers to get their back up a little quality time. He played lights out five for five on that drive. And Brackenridge is just playing the ball. It's hand fighting. They're not going to call that when both guys are no. going for the ball. And you know what Auburn really has to be careful of is Coke comes out over the football. One well, of the toughest things that can happen in sports, if you lose old Mo, sometimes it's mm -hmm. really, that's a great search party out there looking for it. And sometimes you can't retrieve it. So you you got to make sure that you don't lose momentum. About to go under six minutes to play. Cox hit from behind. And he's going to be sacked at the 16-yard line. Brodus is the man who came over and got him. And look out. The Cougars are feeling it. And the Tigers better not go to sleep. Well, there, if there's one, one coach on that Washington State sideline with a little bit of enthusiasm, it's Rob Akey, the defensive coordinator, who's also the defensive line coach. And he runs a stunt on that side. Brodus came inside. Patoy Tua came around from his defensive tackle. And Brodus in there because of the injury to Mullinex is a speed guy. Nice call by Aki to call that stunt on that side. Third punt by Bliss. And they are running a fake. Taken by the short up back out over the 50-yard line to the 45. And it's Will Herring, who has been moved from safety to linebacker, was the up blocking back. They snapped it to him, and the old riverboat gambler, Tommy Tuberville, <laughs> may have just pulled a play that got old Mo back in the corner of Auburn. Well, and let's not forget that Herring from right down the street and Obelika was a quarterback in high school. This was the only Division I-A program that recruited him because they saw that this man could play defense. Well, he's used to handling the ball, did a really nice job. It looked like Washington State was going to stuff it, step to his left, and nobody was home. So first down at the Washington State 42. Brandon Cox going to go on top. Courtney Taylor open inside the 20, and it's going to be first and 10 for the Auburn Tigers at the WSU 17-yard line. And folks put a huge asterisk by that fourth down play by Tommy Tuberville. I just got done saying that I thought that Auburn looked like they were on cruise control. It's a wheel route out and up, basically, and nobody, Brackenridge, could not keep up. Appreciate Rodriguez ran him off, and he got tangled up. Nice recognition by Cox, but that's exactly, I think, why Tommy Tuberville called that fake, because he saw his team on cruise control and didn't want anything to do with it. Yep, I think you're right. From the 17-yard line, Carl Stewart alone and set back. He's going to throw it. And he had a man open, Tommy Trot, the tight end. And Tommy's going to go back to the huddle and say, Carl, like you're playing the violin. <laughs> Make it the soft strings. Just lob it out there. I'll run under it. Oh, my goodness. 
Yeah, he got a little excited. Yeah, he did. Just <laughs> lob it. Trot was wide open. Just lob it. That was a rock and roll throw. That was <laughs> yeah. That was uh, yeah, not he, a classical. Yeah, he was playing a fender there. Yeah. Not a Stradivarius. So, Tommy Trot comes to the sideline. It'll be Irons and Stewart lining up in an eye formation. And Cox wants to throw it. They try to set up a screen. Washington State had worked wonderfully defensively and just got right in the middle of where they were going to screen, which was to the wide side of the field. Nice job defensively. Yeah, Rob Akey is doing a really nice job. It's almost impossible to describe how shorthanded he is. And he's the defensive line coach, so he has to deal with those guys. How shorthanded he is. And so he's changed up. He's going to a bit of a three-man line. He's bringing some undersized guys in. Eichelberger, who hadn't even played until this series, came in and trying to make something happen. This is the eighth play of the drive coming up. 424 left to play, third quarter. to make the seven-yard line. Cox all the time in the world. Everybody's covered. It's a coverage sack. It's going to be fourth down, and the new line of scrimmage will be the 20 as Aaron Johnson got credited with the sack. But give the credit to the secondary of Absolutely. Washington State. They had him blanketed. Well, I think, I think Brandon Cox was expecting blitz here. And he got a drop seven. And the Washington State defensive line just finished its rush. They, they did not stop. A lot of credit to these guys. They have to be worn out. But they finished that rush. John Vaughn in to attempt his fifth field goal of the night. He's four of four. This one is going to be from just outside the 26-yard line. Kick is long enough, and he is no good. He missed the 36-yarder. Look at the Washington celebration State, on the Washington State side of the field. Now, folks, there is a great indication of what uh, Ed and I have been talking about. And even though they're going to take it over with horrible field position, they stopped it with no points. And such a good job of Washington State's defense. These guys it, it, have been out there the entire ball game. Their defensive line has had no breaks. To get a stop and then give up, on a punt fake the first down all the way down into the red zone and come in and get a stop and a missed field goal that's huge momentum sh uh, shift towards Washington State so Gary Rogers comes back in for his second series I beg your pardon it's Brink Alex Brink back in the ball game and he pitches it back to Hootsana and good quick pursuit by Auburn he's got to be bumped out of bounds at the 23 Will Herring on the tackle Gary Rogers, you mentioned the arm strength. He's a big guy, 6'5", almost 240 pounds. There's the throw that caught our attention all the way back across the field. He was 5 for 5 on this drive. Of course, a blown coverage on the tight end, Boyd, who'd walked away from the line of scrimmage. But you still have to give credit to the quarterback for seeing that they did not pick up the big man. Here's Rogers on the sideline. He really is feeling into the ball game. Look at the blitz coming. Caught by Bumpus, and he is caught immediately by the defenders, number 20, Patrick Lee, the junior out of Miami of the Auburn Tigers. And I know that Alex Brink is your quarterback, and he's going to be your starting quarterback as long as he's healthy, but at this stage in the ball game, I, I, I got to think about going with that hot hand. I mean, Rodgers looked really sharp on that last drive. Let's see if Brink can pick up the third down here. Dwight Tardy. in the ball game. But they throw it out to Hutsana. Breaks a tackle. 25-30. And I believe, yeah, he's going to have the first down. He stepped out of bounds, but he was two yards beyond the 10-yard barrier and they'll move the sticks for Washington State. And there's where young players drive coaches crazy. Merrill Johnson has this play dead to rights and just misses the tackle. He, his angle was bad, Ron. He had this snuffed out. And Hutsana, who's a very fast player, I understand that. But Merrill Johnson had him dead to rights. He needs to make that tackle. So Hutsana picks up the first down. Now they go from the 32. Pass at the near sideline. It is almost intercepted by David Irons. David got turned around, but he had a quick read on it. Not quite as large as his brother, Kenny Irons. But... Uh, a tremendous amount of heart on this football player as well. Well, and he's aggressive enough to be able to look back at the quarterback because he was trailing Chris Jordan, and that ball was underthrown. Jordan turned around upset because I think there was a miscommunication between him and his quarterback, but credit Irons for turning around and finding the ball. 
Auburn leads it 26 to 14 as we're about to go under two minutes to play third quarter. She a blitz coming from the outside. They pick it up nicely. Got single coverage and the ball is dropped by Jason Hill. Oh, we got to see that again. I have to believe either he got a piece of it, did David Irons or something, because that's not the kind of ball that Jason Hill's going to drop. And in fairness to the officials, as Irons comes up a little gimpy, they have let hand fighting go on the entire game. Good chuck at the line of scrimmage. The right arm comes out. Well, I got to tell you, Ron, I, I think that's pass interference. Uh, Irons stopped the progress of Hill's left arm as he went to get it. I know they're both out there fighting, but that really looked like all uh, defensive pass interference to me. Well, Irons got his feet tangled and went down, but then Hill couldn't hold on to the football. On third down, near sideline, yeah, and it. now here comes there flags from everywhere. And David Irons is the man who's going to be flagged. And Irons got up a little slow after that last one, and this time he said he was going to be physical on Hill the whole game. This time he just got a little too aggressive. Now the question becomes, is it defensive holding or pass interference. Rocky Good and his crew discussing that very thing right now. Holden on the defense, number four. On the pass, it was to the eligible receiver, a pass that crossed the line. It's a 10 yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Nice explanation by Rocky Good because that's a little bit of a different rule because it was going to the receiver the intended receiver that he held it's a 10 yard penalty instead of and an automatic first down nice explanation by good 149 to play third quarter Washington State trying to claw their way back into this ball game. you see the blitz coming from the left side pass over the middle and again the one thing Brink has been guilty of tonight throwing behind open receivers and Jordan running the quick slant if he gets that in his numbers the guy covering him was inside. He had lost his alignment on the receiver. Excuse me, he was to the outside. He could have gone a long way because the safety had rotated to the other side because it looks like Washington State wants to try to get something deep to Jason Hill. coming and Brink decided he'd just tuck the ball and try to run and Antonio Coleman said nope not going anywhere this uh, young fella a red shirt freshman automobile and another one of those young defenders that uh, the defensive coordinator says this guy has a huge upside well there's plenty of speed in the middle and it looked like they may have been trying a design quarterback draw I don't know if you want to try too many of those now you're going to get pressure some type of screen, if you get pressure, may work good here. Third down, they need to take it to the Auburn 48-yard line. Pass almost intercepted. And it's Will Herring on the cover. When they made the switch for Will Herring to go to linebacker, it was not just for what great coverage. Man, he cut underneath that thing so fast, and that is what a strong safety would do. And since he's played that so much, knows exactly how to cut underneath the tight end. Nice job by Herring. Interesting. He's from Opelika, which is a neighboring community here of uh, Auburn. And he really was not recruited out of uh, high school. Boy, did that snap with the <laughs> personal protector? It sure looked like I, I'll tell you. They are lucky to get that one off. If we could. Daryl Blunt, the punter, did a really nice job adjusting. Oh. It, it, I... it either hit the up back or it slipped out of the hand of the snapper. Yeah, because, and which is very possible. You right. see everybody, you see perspiration on everybody. Let's take a look and, and see if. Uh, no, it just, came it just out funny. Yeah, yeah, it just slipped out of the long snapper's hand. They are really fortunate, and then the kick went off the side of his foot. But they got decent results. Also, Auburn taking over with one of their worst field positions of the night. Sweep to the right, out over the 30-yard line to around the 31. Davis comes over to make the tackle. Joe Cope with a good block. 
is Kenny Irons with still another carry. Well, you were talking about Joe Cope, the center. Not the biggest guy, so what do you do if your center's not very big? You pull it. About 265 pounds. Does a really good job of getting downhill. And a nice block. Good job by Cope. And Cope is just enjoying every moment of this, and he knows that it is because of his tenacity and his heart that that's his starting job, and he is not going to relinquish it. As we end the third quarter, and as we head to the final 15, our score, Auburn 26, and Washington State 14, as the Cougars grab a lot of momentum back in that third quarter. Let's take a break. Auburn trying to live up to that high preseason ranking. On top now, can they hold on? A reminder, this ball game is broadcast on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. So we are set to go for the final 15 minutes. Auburn scrimmages with a second down and short from just across the 30, and here's Kenny Irons. And he'll take it for the first down at the 35. Let's take a look at uh, tonight's game track, and it's presented by Hampton Inn. Irons, the first play of the second half. 58 yards for the touchdown, but this young man right here, Rodgers, came in and sparked the Washington State Cougars, a 90-yard drive in six plays. As you can see, he was perfect. Five of five. Irons, as he can pull the guard. It's a good job defensively by Washington State, and he still winds up picking up six yards in the play. Quickly, let's go back to the studio and another update, this time on the Crimson Tide. Yes, indeed, in a tight ball game. Hawaii down 25-17 here, Ron, to Alabama, but one last shot. Colt Brennan, are all quarterbacks named Colt now? Throws this up. Could it be? No, picked off Lionel Mitchell. And 25-17, Alabama holds on, Ron. Okay, Alabama Crimson Tide, you know, boy, they lost a lot of defenders, and I mean good defenders who had been starters for at least three years. Some of those kids had started as freshmen. Brad Lester is the setback, as you see Brandon Cox with an audible here. And Chris Lex, and he picks up the first down, out over the 45 to around the 46. Uh, Tommy Tupperville has got a situation and his offensive coordinator, Al Borges, where you know, they have got a wealth of talent and some really good young fellows that are not only waiting in the wings, but they're there and available. And, uh, you know, they're going to take advantage of Irons as long as they can. But they got a lot of things to choose from. Well, and I think it all boils down to the fact when we were meeting yesterday with Coach Tuberville about this program, You've got to now put Auburn, because of the wealth of talent and the depth they have at positions like running back, you have to start putting Auburn in one of the elite programs in the country, not just the SEC, but the entire country. Cox, boy, did he have a lot of time. And Courtney, yep, they're going to throw a flag. Courtney Taylor was looking around for an official. He really was not overly vocal about it, but it's going to be pass interference against uh, the Cougars. Yeah, Christian Bass gets there just a, a touch early. Good read and comes through the body of Taylor. Pass interference, defense, number 37. Well, Taylor's 15 yards guy. from the previous box. It was Christian First Bass, down. number 24, not Eric Frampton. And really uh, shocking in a first ball game, Ron. Typically, you see so many more penalties. Both of these teams, it, it really has not looked like a first ball game for both of these teams when you look at not a lot of mistakes, not a lot of mental errors, not a lot of penalties. Pitch back comes to Lester, turns it back into the middle, and look at this guy fight. Lester is only 191 pounds, and he was just taking people with it. And that's a Dildine who holds on to him, the senior out of Graham, Washington, and making the tackle. Well, when you have a program like Auburn and you start getting, and you've seen it at USC, you see it at Ohio State, you see it at Texas, young guys with talent like Brad Lester. Brad averaged almost seven yards per carry last year. Didn't get a bunch of them. 
But every time he goes on the field, unfortunately, it looks like he might have a cramp in his hamstring or his calf. But every time he goes on the field, he's got to prove he belongs out there because they're just going to bring 23 back in if he doesn't do the job. Well, he did the job. The cramp came out, and they got 23 back into the ball game. <laughs> and he got Ben Carl Stewart in there to block for him. He's the lead guy. Gets a block on the safety, and still running as Irons going inside the 20-yard line. And actually, Carl Stewart probably is thinking, I had to go 15 yards downfield before I could find, find somebody anybody. to block. Well, that was what Rob Akey, the defensive coordinator for Washington State, his biggest fear was the middle three offensive linemen. They are so big and so powerful. And that time, Ben Grubbs worked with the left tackle, Dunlap, and then he got up and stuck in the middle linebacker. And just absolute perfect zone blocking on that left side. Three seniors in the middle of that offensive line. They're very tough. Nice job by Carl Stewart. You can see the block that he threw and help paving the way. Again, from the I formation, they go with the sweep. Irons, nice job, Washington State. Strung the play out. It was Christian Bass who was out there saying, okay, I need some help from some friends here, and he got that quickly. I'll tell you something. Frampton, we have called his name a lot tonight, and even if we haven't, 37 has been around the football. I, he's had a nice football game. Well, when you have an offensive line that is getting a man on a man up front, it's going to be the safeties that it spills to. And uh, this offensive line has done a good job assignment-wise in the run game tonight. Got a player shaking up Don Turner, fifth-year senior out of Spokane. You're going to take him out of the ball game. And while we got a minute, let's. Uh, it's time to vote on our MVP. Who do you think should get that this evening? Uh, text the letter that corresponds to your player selection. Send your vote of either A, B, C, or D now to the number 43776 from your cell phone, and we're going to tell you who won later in the game. Each vote, 99 cents, plus standard messaging rates may apply. Lester back in the ball game at tailback. Takes it to the right side at the five, cuts back in, and he will score. Lester from 12 yards, and Ben Grubbs, the senior out of Electric, Alabama, who doesn't get the credit that those other offensive linemen do, give him credit on this one. And they run into the right side. Jonathan Palmer, the right guard, or excuse me, the right tackle, does a really nice job. Again, it's just zone blocking, and that's a zone lead. They brought Stewart in at fullback so that basically what the fullback is now doing is reading the hole just like the running back in front of him, and Stewart more of a running back then a fullback does a nice job, and Lester finishes it. Nice cutback at the end of score. I'll tell you what, besides Grubbs, Tim Duckworth had a really good block on that play as well. Vaughn with the extra point attempt, and he's got it. So with 11 minutes, two seconds left in the ball game, our new score, Auburn 33 and Washington State 14. So let's take a break as you look at the touchdown run by Lester of 12 yards. Youngster out of Lilburn, Georgia. Three fourteen, our new score. About to go under eleven minutes left to play in our ball game. A set-out crowd tonight here on the plains, eighty-seven thousand four hundred and fifty-one, and they have witnessed what has to please the Auburn crowd so far. I have to say, Bill Dobas' team, I give them a ton of credit Absolutely. for and guts that they showed in the third quarter when uh, they came very close to grabbing the momentum back in this ball game, and it's certainly not over. But, I mean, they came back, and there was some real excitement on that side. Of it. I'm going to be anxious to see, is it going to be Rodgers who comes back in this ball game, or is it going to be Brink? I'd have to go with Rodgers. He looked awfully good on his drive. Not taking anything away from Alex Brink. He's had a tough night with some protection breakdowns. But he hasn't been exactly sharp tonight. He's had a couple of throws behind. Let's go to the sideline. Dr. Jerry Punch with his very close friend, Bones. Thank you very much, Ron. People talk about MCL, ACL injuries. What are they really referring to? We had a couple of Auburn players at MCL sprains in the fall camp. Let me show you what we're talking about here. See the inside of the knee. The MCL is the medial collateral ligament. And when it gets sprained, the, you'll plant the foot and you'll twist the leg and it'll pull that ligament and stretch it. Now, what's an ACL? If I move the kneecap out of the way and bend the knee, you look inside and you see those two cross ligaments those are the ACL the anterior cruciate ligaments guys okay Jerry great stuff 
In fact, stay there with Bones and, and, and a couple of more questions for you. Okay. Doc, you know, everyone talks about the ACL. Why is that one so important when it's torn that that's what is called a blown knee? Exactly. What happens uh, when you tear the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligaments, cruciate is Latin for cross. If you look in the middle of the knee, you see these two ligaments that actually cross when you bend inside. And if you tear the front one, the knee is not very stable. The whole leg will go forward when you try to run. That's why it's so, so serious. Okay, Jer, thank you very much. Dwight Tardy, the ball carrier there, and it's uh, short yardage. It's going to be a third down situation for Washington State. And, of course, after the touchback, they're going to have to take this to the 30-yard line. Otherwise, that defense is going to have to come right back out on the field to play. Well, the good news on third and three, you've got your entire playbook. It does not have to be a drop-back pass. You can do some kind of sprint draw, roll out, brink, and give him a run throw option. Brink, five-step drop, got a man over the middle, and it's complete. Whoa, boy, Jason Hill, and now here comes Helmets and Agdon. Yeah. And I like this call. Savage is the man that I think is going to be called for the helmet to helmet. And I really like this call. You know, this is something you see called a lot in the NFL, helmet to helmet contact. Illegal contact to the helmet. Number two against the defense. He'll be 15 yards from the end of the play on that first down. Let's take a look at that. Let's watch it real time and listen to the contact. Well, I'd like to see that in slow motion because it looked to me like Savage may have turned and tried to get his shoulder in there. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, boy, I don't know. I mean, I know that's very fast for an official to see, but I wouldn't mind taking a look at that in slow motion. From the 50-yard line following the penalty. Going to step up. Got a man over the middle and just beyond the outstretched arms of Michael Bumpus. Let's take a look. It, it looked to me like right at the last moment that Savage may have tried to drop his shoulder in there to make this hit, which would have made it a clean hit. No, he got the side of his helmet. He was trying to duck he down. Was, yeah, he was trying to duck but, down. But the, the rule is not intent. It's what really happened. So uh, Savage was not trying to be dirty. He was trying to get it, but it, he did end up hitting him with his head. 9.27 left to go in our ball game. Second down and 10. Pitch back into the boundary. It's tardy. And Dwight is going to take it around the 47-yard line. So it'll be third down and long. And again, this is one of the problems that Washington State has had as March made the tackle. Again, playing behind the change instead of dictating more to the defense, you know, what they want to do. And, and as much pressure as Will Muschamp, the new defensive coordinator at Auburn, has been able to get with just his front four, you, you don't want to get into these situations because he doesn't have to blitz. He can play coverage behind a very active defensive line. Third down, line to make is the 40 of Auburn. Pressure up the right corner. Ball is intercepted by Herring. Will Herring. Exact same thing he did on the last time they tried to go to Boyd on the outcut. Ran right underneath of it, the old safety. Making Will Muschamp look like a smart guy for moving him to linebacker. Almost reminds me of the Patton movie when Patton said... I read your book, and, it, and on that play, Will Herring, it's almost like he could have turned to the Washington State bench and said, I read your playbook. I almost got it last time. Well, he's just running right through it. Cody Boyd showed him what he was going to run, and the old safety says, all right, I know you're running the outcut. I'm just going to start cutting underneath of it. A lot of people question the move, Herring going to linebacker, but this is a move not only for Auburn University, but also for this young man's future. He's going to, If he's going to play at the next level, it's going to be an outside linebacker, not a strong safety. So move from safety into linebacker, which means he's playing in the box. That's totally different. But he was a quarterback in high school. Here's Irons. Irons is going to have a gain of about 18 yards in the play. And again, Joe Cope, the center, with an outstanding block. Yeah, they're getting old Kofi out there on the pulls. Washington State with a player injured. Yeah. And, and Preche Rodriguez downfield did a really good job of sealing off his man. And Irons cutting right underneath of that.
You know, when Kenny Irons walked in the other day, I, I, I knew he wasn't a big guy. He's very solidly built, but what, 203, 204? Hard as a rough. He runs so much bigger than that. Yeah. He really does. Let me ask you this. How many backs do you see in the game today that after this many carries and this many yards, that after that last run that he got roughed up pretty good at, at, at when he was tackled, would look back toward the bench and kind of like, <laughs> you know, hey, I'm coming over there and, and see you guys? Yeah. He's not going to do that. He, no. he, he wants to say, you know, how many more yards can I get? Well, both him and David, his brother, they live together. And David... David had to get Kenny a little focused last year and say, hey, you're messing up, man. You need to show up to practice and be serious and work hard. But he's got he's got his personality back. He got focused. He got quiet. Everyone said he changed a little bit last year, but he, he's less than quiet now. He's, he grew up. He's, yeah, he's, and, and now he can be himself. Yeah. He figured it out. The light went on. He knew the work he had to do. He did it. He learned. Trey Smith, the other senior running back, complimented him the other day in a senior meeting and said, you have really shown me a lot over the last year. So they took him out of the ball game to give him a breather. That means uh, Trey Smith and Carl Stewart will man the duties in the backfield. Stewart is at fullback. In fact, Stewart with a block. Picks his man inside and the run by Trey Smith. Let's go back to the studio and check in. Aaron, thank you. You had to think that Arkansas in Fayetteville is going to have a long memory. It doesn't go back that long, just last year, 70 to 17. Now look at this hard hit. Arkansas sticking it to him. Dallas Washington with this hit, and it's a good ball game. It's 16 to 7, though. USC still with the lead on the road at the half, Ron. Okay, that is a, that is a message sender right there. That's you know that's that's Western Union. <laughs> 33-14 our score with it. just over seven minutes to play. Trey Smith still in the ball game at tail that. And he'll get the handoff back into the short side of the field. They try to collar him high and he gets by that tackle, but it's not going to be enough. It'll be third down and one. Scott Davis on the stop. And uh, Dr. Jerry Punch, let's check back with you. Guys, I talked to Trey Smith's mom before the game, so let's make mama happy. Trey Smith's real name is Lyle C. Smith, but because he is the third Lyle C. Smith in the family, he was given the nickname Trey when he was a little boy, and it stuck. Ever since then, everyone calls him Trey, but his real name, according to mama, is Lyle C. Smith, and now mama's happy. I'll fix that for me. <laughs> I'm sure they know he's I'm sure that's going to make him really happy. <laughs> and I, I well, don't you wanna... already ratted out Stewart for being a violin player, I, so we might I as well. I don't want to make all the Lyles in the audience. Uh, I think Lyle is a great name, but he's gone by Trey all his life. But there is Carl Stewart sneaking through with left guard behind the blocking of Grubbs and Cope and Duckworth, and he will pick up the first down. And Auburn doing right now exactly what they want to do. They're moving the football, but they're also moving the clock. Because Washington State, I know we're talking about a score right now that looks like this has been a total blowout, but I'm telling you, as far as momentum and what was happening in this ball game, uh, Washington State came really close to mm -hmm. getting the momentum back, particularly after that 90-yard drive. Ball just inside the 10. Smith. Good pursuit as a marker goes down, and now a second marker. And you can see Joe Cope turning to his fellow players and saying, that's a face mask. Trey Smith did a really nice job of trying to bounce that outside. He ducked it in. Excuse me, Lyle. Ducked it in. Bounce right outside. I think Brian Williams is the man that they're going to get on this. I don't know if it's incidental or, or the major version. Mass defense number 28. It's a five yard penalty from the end of the run and still first down. Well, it's so hard when you're in pursuit. And what a nice move. Almost got to the outside before Williams had to grab his face mask to take him down. So the five yard penalty. Now the clock runs with uh, five minutes and 20 seconds left to play. And it's first and goal from the five. Cuts the ball back inside, and uh, Trey Smith is down to around the two and a half yard line, tackled by Greg Trent. Well, it's hard to believe that when Al Borges was hired as the offensive coordinator, he was an outsider, a West Coast guy who was hired from Indiana, who isn't exactly known as a football power. 
And uh, a lot of people question Tommy Tuberville and, and why he brought this guy here. But that first year was just magical with Jason Campbell and Ronnie Brown and all those fellas going undefeated. But he's really adjusted to this program and the type of guys that they recruit. It's a running back based offense. Started all the way back with Rudy Johnson. who was the first big running back that Tommy recruited. And that's what they continue to do. Terman is in the ball game now. Number 47 at fullback. And they're going left. That's where the fullback went. Smith hurdles, but he hurdled short of the goal line. He's going to have a gain of one. Abdullah was there to make the tackle. There's a good look at Terman. Junior out of Hoover, Alabama, which is a suburb of, uh, of Birmingham. I don't know why this type of run always reminds me of the SEC. I always think of Herschel Walker, Bo Jackson. That, those guys used to take off from the five-yard line and could make it into the end zone. I, I don't know why, but that particular type of jump always reminds me of this conference. Well, now inside of four minutes. Auburn not in a hurry, and they don't have to be. Still with nine seconds on the play clock. I think they'd like to see Trey Smith score. He gets the ball. Right side tries to bounce off a tackle, and he's not going to get in. And I don't think that's going to perturb anybody as Corey Evans made the tackle. <laughs> the crowd wants the him. crowd, you that's know, they want him to go for it. And I'd give it to Lyle. Let Trey try one more time. Well, Carl Stewart's going to check into the lineup, and you'd have to keep an eye on him as well as the fullback at almost 235 pounds. And in fact, Trey Smith's going to come out of the ball game. So he had his opportunity. Now let's see. If it's going to be, will Terman stay in there? We know that Stewart is there. Well, Terman is a full, uh, true yeah. fullback, so Stewart goes to that tailback position. So it looks as though Carl Stewart is the man that they're going to make the guy. Goes to the right side, touchdown, Carl Stewart. Sweet violin music. with a really good block also Leon Hart number 72 and if I'm Trey Smith I'm grabbing the offensive line when they come over and say hey couldn't you have opened a hole like that when I was in I had to jump from the four yard line to try to get in <laughs> I'll tell you what they took up an amazing amount of time from when they scrimmaged at the 10 yard line that was a good job of burning a lot of time off the clock and that was a really nice lead block by Andrew Terman just swallowed his guy whole and Stewart stayed tight to him and bounced it to the outside. Stewart's mom and dad are teachers and he told us even with the second degree he's not sure what he wants to do but he might want to be a teacher as well. Extra point is good and let's take a timeout. 254 left in our game. It is Auburn 40. Washington State 14. Golf cart going to come up here. Do we come down to So 40 to 14, our score. And we, my goodness, we've lost a tooth. <laughs> what, what is the tooth fairy bringing these days? It was a quarter when I was a kid. Oh. Is it up to like two or three bucks? Oh, mm -hmm. at, at least, as you look at Tommy Tuberville, 37 and 0 and scoring 30 points or more. And if you lost a tooth on that day, and this is word of, of wisdom to the tooth fairy who's watching you tonight, hey, parents, that's worth 10 bucks. <laughs> I mean, that's the lucky night. That's like hitting the lotto. <laughs> okay, so who did uh, you select tonight for the MVP? Here are the results, and congratulations to Kenny Irons, who got almost 60%. Brandon Cox, John Vaughn with 20. That's not surprising. And uh, Gary Rogers with 6%. And he certainly deserved some recognition tonight. He came off the bench and directed his ball close.